<laughs> yeah, what's up, Charles? What I'm doing? It's been a while. It's been a minute. I haven't streamed in like three weeks, eh? You guys miss me? No? Okay, fine. <laughs> Jeez. I should been a minute. <laughs> three year badge? Yo, three more wait, three more months? <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Oh, guys, I've been working so much since I've been back. It's actually been so so busy, bro. So busy, man. Yo guys, I was literally like working, button down, no shirt on, like like full savage. Cock on the table. And then I was like, fuck, I got a stream, guys. I should probably put some shit on, you know? Um, so, anyways, here I am. And, uh, yeah, guys, we almost uh, achieved the impossible, okay? <laughs> it would have been too crazy. The storyline would have been too good. Um, but, yeah, it's all good. Reset my mental. Um, yeah, I played some crazy Yu-Gi-Oh this past couple of weeks and, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm actually happy to be live right now to share some of the stories. Um, and I really appreciate all of your support after looking the goo. Yo guys, <laughs> yo, I set the wrong time to upload the deck profile. That's why it came out on Friday instead of Sunday. <laughs> I was like, I woke up. I'm getting calls from 20 people. They're like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, dude, I thought you were going to release it Sunday. Yo, what's going on? They're like, delete the video. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I accidentally put it out on Friday instead of Sunday. Uh, I guess it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but um that was crazy that was honestly crazy uh dude people like it was at 9 pst which is like right before deck like an hour before decklist were due so it was like still fine um so it's all good it's all good it's all good we were scrambling in matcha <laughs> <laughs> yeah do not share what happened round six of why is vegas wait what happened round six? Oh, guys yo can i give a huge shout out to uh my mod grunt gone wild guys my mod topped the ycs with me isn't that kind of giga chad who here can say i topped the ycs with their twitch mod who here can say that like who here can say that i think that's kind of goaded yo um, so, so shout out to Grunt's Gone Wild in the chat, bro. He was cooking. No, he's not Hanse. No, 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 he's not Hanse. Uh, his name is Matt. I just, I just doxed his real name. Um, but yeah, guys, if you are a packed Twitch mod, you just inherently are blessed. I'm sorry. That's just how that works. <laughs> oh, shoot. Actually, Christian Urena is a Twitch mod too? Hmm. Suspect. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Twitch mods just get a boost, eh? Um. Damn, two year mods talked with you? Dude, I'm, yo, dude, fuck, man. This shit's going kind of crazy. Dude, we might have to start getting some more mods. Oh, shoot, Cam too? Wait, yo. <laughs> yo, if you were trying to get modded crazy now, they're like, damn, I need, let me get that top. Let me get that top. <laughs> uh, yo, sub stitch, sub, 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 sub. <laughs> um, that's the key to topping. Yes, all you gotta do if you mod equal top, watch pack equals top. Guys, yes, the funniest part was. I actually ended up playing their team in Swiss. Like, I played against Grunts at the YCS. <laughs> Dude, what are the chances that ever happens? It was actually so wild. Dude, I sat at their table, 
And they're like, yeah, we're playing some randoms. And I'm like, huh? I literally sat, I literally went to the table. I'm like, yo, hey, what's up? And like, oh, and they were like talking to themselves. They're like, yo, yeah, we're about to play some randoms. And then I'm like, damn, that's how it be, eh? That's some random dude now, eh? I lose the YCS finals. I'm just, I'm just some random dude now, eh? <laughs> uh, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. Uh, but I thought it was some, some funny stories from the past weekend. <clears throat> Um, host a giveaway for your next for your teammates for next week with you, so me and Gunther can coincidentally win. <laughs> That's so funny. His first wife says he tops. Yeah, that was demon. That was actually demon. Yeah, I think I should probably do that one of these days. Um, which is, I should probably run a giveaway to pick a third or pick a second. Um, for a YCS, that would be really cool for like a three three. Wait, every time every one of my locals now says, "God damn!" When they get when bonus bro gets a broken godhead, not trying to be rude, but how does it feel being a teammate that started a new trend? How much I need to don't you be a three three team? Chill, chill, chill. Uh, do it. Yeah, I think that could be kind of nice. That'll be kind of cool. Guys, I was so ready to make the most insane, most banger tweet of all time. Can anyone guess what tweet I was gonna made make? Not made. If I won the YCS in Vegas, I had the most craziest tweet, bro. Lined up, bro. Lock and loaded. Oh, man. No, it wouldn't, bro. Obviously, you could do some Drake line. You could be like, yo, I'm going back to back. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> How free was Grudges T? <laughs> yo, Ken's trolling. God damn, we won. Nah. <laughs> Nah, nah. It would have been four years ago, I played my first YCS. Four years later, I'm a four-time YCS champion. That tweet would have gone crazy. And now, what can I do? I can only put three. That shit is awful. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? Fifth world problems, I guess. It is what it is. But, I'm <laughs> going to Disney World... <laughs> Just win rally forehead, guys. I have unfortunate news. Just lie about how long you've been playing. <laughs> Pac felt bad after beating me, so he donated his sleep. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I felt bad because, bro, yo, Grunts at the YCS was using white X Ray sleeves and white main deck sleeves. I was literally like, dog, you can't be looking like this, bro. You're caught slacking. Your pants are down. Like, you can't do this. So I had to give him some extra decks, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is not okay. Is that even legal? <laughs> I mean, it, I think it is. Like, why would that be illegal? <laughs> like, it's fine, right, at the end of the day. But anyways, I just thought it was really funny. So I'm like, bro, take some extra decks, please, man. This shit is foul. Just say main, <laughs> wait, same main extra sleeve is the wave. Can't, <laughs> um... Can't be my mod only this facts, bro. Supreme Pro Restock, dude. I don't know. That should be disappearing off the inventory, bro. It's legal, but it's wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about the out to summon limit game three. We got a lot to talk about. So we're gonna talk about Lullaby Obedience. We're gonna talk about could I have won that game versus Honey? Um tilted by like the was there any beef between Honey and I? All that stuff. I know you guys are all curious. Blah 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Um, see you in Sydney. Yo, GG, I wish, I wish. Guys, I have very unfortunate news. I don't think I'll be attending the next four YCS. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but, uh, I don't think I'm going to Sydney. I don't think I can go to Columbia. I don't think I can go to Mexico. And I don't think I can go to Raleigh. Uh, I just have a lot of work going on right now. You know what I'm saying? Gotta take care of, like, IRL work and shit. So... I think uh, it's going to be tough, guys. I, I feel like I've never missed an NA event ever before. And it might be the first one in a long-ass time. So, yeah, I think I'm going to make some merch. I think I'm going to make a merch line called Good Damn, which I thought would be really funny. Imagine you have a job. I know, guys. Streamer has a IRL job. How? Um, 
I guess we'll do a watch party then. This is going to be the first time I'm going to be on the other side where I'll probably stream Rally if they stream it. Dude, I know. Josh hit me up. I, I talked to Josh a lot, actually. That that's my boy right there. That's my guy. But Josh hit me up. He's like, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, cheer up, bro. Like, this is just like, like you're going to be in more finals, you know? Like, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, like, you can't be great without losing. I was like, damn, bro. That means a lot, man. Thank you. Josh is the GOAT. Uh, but, and then, of course, we talked about the format. And he's like, yo, I think I think I might come to Raleigh. <laughs> yeah, the Billy motivational speech. Yeah, facts. Yeah, I got some. I got a lot of motivational speech. Guys, I, I hope none of you will have ever, like, if you guys have ever lost in the finals, Dude, I, I would not wish that upon my worst enemy. We were tired, dude. Yo, yeah. Oh, my God. Heisman is swearing in the chat right now. Yo, you might have to, you might have to lose that VIP badge. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're going to want to talk about time cards today? If you cite time cards, you are capital A to the S to the S. Um, uh, you, you'll, you'll figure out what that means. Uh, but, but yeah, I, it's going to be tough. I think I'm going to be on the other side, but yeah, Josh told me he really wants to come to Raleigh, uh, because Europeans are not getting any YCSs. Dog, I don't know why. Um, yeah, I don't know how, yo, I, I'm actually genuinely confused. How is Europe, uh, without a YCS? Like, dude, conspiracy theory, bro. I guess they just don't want, like, Josh to catch up. <clears throat> Josh about to destroy the environment. Facts. Raleigh is the worst city ever. Dude, I'm not going to lie. North Carolina might have been one of the worst y cities I've ever attended. That shit was ass-ass. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be actually unfortunate. I'm actually really sad. Uh, I've, I actually have, like, a lot of work requirements that will make it so I can't intend. It's actually unfortunate. I actually don't even think I'll be in the States. I actually have to go somewhere else. Um, yeah. NAWCQ was the worst I've ever been to. Was that Chicago? That place was kind of ass, too. Well, for Brazil. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm going to try for Brazil, yeah. And then I'm going to try for... Obviously, Nats. Oh, is that North Carolina? Um, yeah, I have no idea. Yo, what's up, Enzo? Richmond was shit. Was that Rich was Richmond ass? I think Richmond was ass too. No, dude, I don't know. A lot of white music are low key ass. Um, Pass wash confirmed. I'm wash. <laughs> I'm wash. Um, I'm excited for Austin, Texas, though, for Nats. Uh, does anyone have the screenshot of the, uh, of, of uh, all the events coming up? Actually, I can look it up. Yu-Gi-Oh! Events YCS. Okay, let me check this. Boom. Get ready to duel. Some kind of the disencoder mentioned saying you're making a video prep for event you don't go to give people a pros POV. Oh wait, that's crazy because I was actually gonna do that already. I actually have a, a video that I'm working on called this. If I wanted to win Why says Sydney, I do this. So I'm actually working on a video already called Yeah, let me see if I can show you guys this. I wanna uh, let me take a screenshot. <sighs> Yeah, so this is a video I'm working on right now. So, it's in the works, I guess. I, I think it'll be a cool concept about, like, talking about how I would prepare for a YCS that I'm not going to. Um, I think that could be kind of nice. So, I'm down bad for a YCS. So, I think we all are, but may specifically Europeans. Uh, Euro team YCS, you Josh Farfa named two goats, named two goats and a backpack. That is who is the back? I, I guess I'm the backpack then. Backpack. Ooh. 
Um, so these are all the wises coming up. Obviously, Vegas just happened. We have Medellin, Colombia. Uh, we have Guadalajara, Mexico, Raleigh, Brazil, and then Indianapolis. I think I want to be able to attend these two, but I don't think I'm going to be able to attend these three. There's also Sydney is not on this page, which is kind of sus. Nah, I'm playing with Josh. This is a 3 3. Sorry. Yo, Quanto, I'm 4. Yo, he didn't want me to tell you this, bro, but you got dropped, bro. I'm sorry, man. It happens, bro. <laughs> Anyways, um. Guys, if I don't top YC's Indie, expect a tweet, okay? Expect a, expect a tweet. If I don't top this event, I expect a banger tweet. I'm telling you right now. They better they better let me top this shit, alright? Y'all about to get some crazy shit. <laughs> Yo, this form has some ass. <laughs> uh, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. Unless. Packers Jesse Final. She. I heard Farmer wants to win a 3v3. Why is there a team that would carry his ass? Chill, chill. Damn, Stank is not get hit before you play another YCS? Probably. Why is it Sydney? Yeah, that's happening in like two or three weeks. They might stream it. They streamed YCS Sydney before, actually. Um, I guess I'll team with Josh and Pax. <laughs> hey, Josh did hit me up and said, Yo, next three, three, let's talk. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to do no leaks. I'm not trying to do no leaks, but you know what I'm saying? He said, let's talk. That's all I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, um, don't trust you? <laughs> Packing Cup, does he chill, chill, chill? Put some respect on his name. Now that Wolfpack top Vegas, join us for next watches. <laughs> Yo, chill, chill, chill. You gotta get your 3-3 team before they announce it. That's the real play. Yo, Gunther knows the goo. Bro, guys, I don't know if this is like common knowledge or not, but getting, getting, dude, deciding a 3v3 team is super AIDS. Like, it is like, it is not easy, okay, to get a 3v3 team. It's way harder than you guys would think. Um, like, <laughs> like, you got to, yeah, Gunther's right, bro. You really, you guys really got to get on your grind now. You know what I'm saying? You got to get on your grind and find your team ASAP, bro. They can't, like, you don't even want that shit to be announced yet. You got to have that team ready. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But it's so easy. Get Jared, have him draw shifter. Great. <laughs> I will, dude, guys. Okay, guys. I don't know if you agree with this. My pet peeve is if a 3v3 team don't all play the same list, then, then like, there's something wrong. I don't know, man. That's just me, you know? It's like my pet peeve. You either in it together or you not. You know what I'm saying? Because there's one way to play. There should be one right way to play, and you guys should all agree. If you don't, then, like, the other person just try to convince the other person. All right. Um, how did you end up with Hansen as the third? Oh, yeah, we could talk about this. So, all right, let me explain. A, let me clear up some, like, crazy, crazy rumors, okay? First things first. Uh, obviously, I'm, like, really happy to w have one with... Uh, Come on, Ruben, for the second time. But uh, the reason why I, I teamed with Sam and Triff, which was the original team for Vegas, was because uh, they were the first team. Uh, th that was the first YCS, the first YCS I've ever attended was with those two guys. So I wanted to run it back because uh, the first YCS I attended in 2020 uh, for 2020 Vegas, um, we got 17th. And in my head, I was like, we could do so much better. Right. So I was like, you know what? I think that if we were to run it back. I think we could do we could do way better than we did um, 
for my first YCS. Uh, and so that was like the goal. And so after I didn't know I was going to win Costa Rica. Like I didn't know that. And I already agreed to the teams before. So that's why I didn't switch. There's no like bad blood between Kamal and I or Ruben and I. It was just we just already agreed on like certain teams. And they also agreed on like uh certain teams ahead of time as well. So that's why. Um and of course somehow we ended up playing in top eight, which was so crazy. Like what are the odds that you guys just win a YCS together and then the week after you guys play in top cut on feature? Like what is the odds? Like that shit is so demon. But uh, it happened. I mean, it has happened, right? Like, when all your friends are, like, really good at Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, it's only bound to happen. They're going to play each other in top cut. Like, that is just the nature of... That's just that's just life. Like, I mean, you're going to have to beat solid players to win YCSs. It's never that easy, right? <clears throat> so. So, yeah. So, there's that. And the, how we ended up with Hansei was... Originally, uh, it was supposed to be just Sam and I. And Steven, but then Steven kind of like uh, bailed last minute because he had some like urgent work stuff that he, in his own words, he quoted, it's life or death. And so, um, I'm saying, you have, I mean, what can you do? So you can't attend. And then we had to scramble last minute. Like, this is like, I literally just got off the plane from Costa Rica. I'm like in America, I'm in the States. I just landed. I get 20 million texts from time. He's like, yo, we don't got a third. We don't got a third. Like, this is crazy. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? What happened? He's like, yeah, Steven can't go. I'm like, fuck. Really? He's like, yeah, we got to find a third. So we went, we reached out to like a bunch of people. Um, uh, we reached out to like Herman, but then Herman deleted his visa. So he can't come. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was really funny. Herman literally deleted his visa. Well, I, I don't ask me how. All right. Um, I tried to... Uh, I tried to get, <laughs> I tried to steal a teammate from someone else. That was also kind of crazy. Um, but I, I did it respectfully. <laughs> respectfully, of course. Uh, try to steal a teammate. Um, I, I, uh, after that, um, we tried to get Nesh to come. Um, uh, Nesh. Nesh was uh, an option for two seconds uh, because what ends up happening was uh, we got Nesh on the flight. Nesh is about to be on the way. And then all of a sudden, they said that his flight was overbooked. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we tried to get Luca. Yeah, Luca uh, For Forion, I guess. He, he, we, I was trying to get him on the team because I, I just tested with him a lot. <clears throat> so... Uh, it only makes sense to just play with people you test with a lot, right? So that's why I try to get him on the team. Um, but we couldn't find a replacement for Luca that the other team wouldn't be happy with, so that didn't work. And then we got Nesh, but and we were about to get Nesh. Yeah, on, we were about to get Nesh. We were about to yo, we were about to give Nesh the the win, but I don't know, bro. He'd be taking ten minutes. He takes ten minutes to normal summon thing I ash. So honestly, maybe it was destiny. <laughs> I live, I'm like, yo, Nesh, we're not holding Imperm for fucking Promethean. I, I'm Imperm I think I have. You know what I'm saying? I had to lay some groundwork before I agreed to team with him. All right? Uh, and and uh, I was like, you got to take those shitty-ass Fire King cards out of your deck. All right? Um, so, yeah, Nesh started playing, started, would play around Battle Fader. He would actually play around Battle Fader. Um... So obviously, um, so obviously that didn't work out because his flight got overbooked. They canceled it, and then they made him get on a. There's like a new flight, but it would be like twenty something hours with four layovers, or yeah, four or three layovers. And then he was like, "Yo, this is impossible. I can't make it." Okay. Um, then, then, um. Then Hanse, um, who for some reason, if you guys don't know who he is, he, he's like a two-time national champion. Uh, really, really solid player and so even more solid um, person. Uh, made a Facebook post. And he was like, yo, looking for a 
of like looking for a team. I'm coming to Vegas. Um, so I'm like, yo, Hansi, what's good? And he's like, yeah, I'm down to play. And he, he, he basically just came with us. And then, yeah, that was that. Yeah, honestly, Nesh would probably get DQ'd for stuff that if we get streamed, Nesh would get DQ'd for some of the language he uses. Like, if you watch a Nesh stream, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Nesh would get DQ'd so fast. Like, the choice of words he used would, would be insane. And he might be slow playing on stream for jokes. <laughs> like, it would be too demon. We might have dodged a band there, guys. We, might, we may have dodged a DQ. So, honestly, might have worked out. And then, yeah. So... Imagine Pack in the middle, his left and right got game losses and DQ. <laughs> Why is this comment? Yeah, I am unfortunately not going to be attending, I believe. It's going to be hard. Um, yeah, so. That's how we came up with the team composition, uh, comp composition pretty much. Uh, and I think it worked out pretty well. I think we, uh, we, we worked out as a team. Pretty well. Uh, we didn't have two round buys, which actually played in our favor because, um, you know, it's it's nice to warm up um, during the first two rounds and play against people. Um, so, so I think that's really really solid. Um, I actually really like the fact that we played the first two rounds of Swiss. I mean, I wouldn't complain about two round buys, but I think like, um, I think like playing the first two rounds is actually kind of nice. Like it, I think like, uh, I think I've never teamed with Sam and Hans. I've never teamed with Sam and Hanse together. Well, I've teamed with Sam before, but I've never teamed with Hanse before. So it's nice to like, uh, like, you know, understand like how they think and then understand their mannerisms and like understanding like how they play and stuff like that so i think that was uh that was nice no sam has four tops now actually let, let me check do you guys know that there's a wiki page e -pot you guys know there's a wiki page for duelists look he has uh four ycs tops Dude, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's more than um, a lot of people. Oh, wow. Weakness. I've never heard of that. I wonder if I have one. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. I recently got added. Yeah, a bunch of people got added recently. Yo, like John Wilkin got added recently as well. Um. So, yeah. Yeah, also almost, yeah. Bro, he has more tops than my entire team combined. <laughs> Let me see yours. What wiki is this? Uh, it's called like Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki, I think. Um, Pretty sure JW made his own wiki. <laughs> uh, how do you even search people on here? So, I think I have one too, I think. Oh, yeah, see, there's me. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Not too bad. It has like all your tops and stuff and what decks you played, so Infernoble. Yo, thank you for the five. <laughs> Why didn't Sam use B E? What's B E? Yeah, there's like I think everyone. Sounds like a light, my boy. Yo, chill, chill, chill. I'm just a noob. The fuck? Why do you have why do you have 33, you sick fuck? <laughs> Yo, this this man has too much, bro. How do you say your name? Pakawat. I think you have two. Wait. Jack Rory? Wait, is it this? Right here, Jack Rory. Oh yeah, they have you have a page now. I don't have a wiki page. <laughs> why is this Vancouver? Dutch Nats. Man going for a life story 33. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, so anyways. um, Oh, yeah, look at Josh's thing. Holy shit. Man's got 40 tops for fun. 
Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so Sam, long story short, Sam has a bunch of tops. So Sam is four. Wait, Jesse, let's see. That's how you know you made a Yu-Gi-Oh! You get a wiki page. Uh, oh shit, they updated his picture. This is actually a pretty clean picture. Um, the fuck? First top in 2015? Man. Jesse's old, but he's also young. I can't even call him old. <laughs> yeah, this is actually... Yeah, this is fucking crazy. Um, about to see me on there for real, not really. <laughs> but um, yes. Yeah, so long story short, Sam has like uh, he has tops. He just uh been focused on his channel, you know, so it's hard. But uh, he's actually pretty clean. Miss you, miss you too, bro. One more, why since I'll be on there? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how like you get on here to be honest. Like, do people just add you randomly? I guess I don't know. But, um, anyways, yeah, so, there's that. Oh, yeah, and this is Hansei. This is my teammate. This is actually a nice-ass picture. <laughs> Yo, that's insane. <laughs> um... The mass up era, that's COVID era, bro. Oh, he also tops San Jose, so that's why it was like, I was like, yeah, I'm down. Like, he, you know what I'm saying? He's been, he's been practicing. We won't talk about the no jet in his deck, though. Hmm, sussy. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Hansei, when it's Hansel? Um, no, it's Hansei. It's like German. Uh, I think that's what he, how he explains to me. I think he's like, he has like, uh, he has like German influence. I'll be there soon, the sheet guy. <laughs> Let's go. Um, I wish I showed my game one for this Hansen top four was kind of gas. Oh, shoot. What's up? Wait, Levi, right? Wait, we played you guys in top four, right? Levi? Yeah, yo, I heard Hansen said you played really well. Uh, He said you played really well in top four. He was like, yo, you play kind of fucking crazy. I think he, I think you like killed him. He told me you killed him through Nib Valor or some shit. That's what he told me. Um, Which is uh, props to you. Yeah, I mean, guys, honestly, I have to say, playing on feature match is, like, super stressful if you're not used to it. Um, like, uh, my opponent in top four got mad unlucky because he said okay, and then the judge just, the judge was just sharked him on it. <laughs> the judge just sharked him on it. <laughs> Bro, the judge just sharked. I just sat there, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, the judge just cooked them. I was like, I mean, what can I do? <laughs> like, uh, and it's tough. It's tough, though. Like, it's tough. Because, like, it's like, I feel like playing on feature is, like, a whole nother level of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and what I mean by this is that, like, it's like, it's like you got to be careful what you say, what you do, like, everything. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just, it's rough. Yeah, give me back help me for battle. Yeah. Yep. Also, the reason why future matches are also rough is because in a 3v3 setting, you can't help your team. You can't because you sit so far from each other. I like I, I don't know if anyone has ever attended a 3v3 YCS before. 
But when you play in Swiss rounds, uh, you sit quite close to your teammates. Like, you're very close to them. Like, they're, like, probably this far apart from you. But when you're at the feature match table, like, they're this far away from you. Like, they're, like, that far. Like, they're, like, that. Like, they're, like, maybe an arm's away from you. Um, but, like, at, like, when you sit next to each other at a you're only this far apart. Like, you got, yeah, you have a literal human literally blocking you. Um... That's why in Swiss, I ended up declining all my feature matches. Because I felt like it was more of a hindrance than a benefit. Like, I, I think I declined like three or four feature match requests in Swiss. Because like, I played against Dom's team in Swiss. And I was like, yeah, hell no. I'm not going up there. Unless I have to. Um, I got like one, round one and round two, I got asked feature match. Like feature match requests. I'm like, hell no. I'm not doing that. Because it's literally a disadvantage. Like, playing up on stage is actually a disadvantage. You literally can't talk to your teammates. You could barely see their board. But the thing is, if you're in, in top code, you cannot decline feature matches. In top code, you cannot decline feature matches. So if they ask you, you have to go up. It is what it is. Um, I went through the gauntlet. We played Kamal, Urena, and Hobbit's team. Yo, that's actually nasty. <laughs> but that's normal, though. Like... 3v3 Y Stages are the most stacked events because uh, in 3v3s, the variances are um, lowered because uh, your teammates can compensate for when you get quote unquote sacked, bad hands, shit like that, right? Like you have teammates to like offset that variance. So what ends up happening is when you team up with like a lot of 3v3s are just like a bunch of really strong players who play together. As a result, as a result, um, you typically see the same names in top cut. Because when you are teaming up with other strong players, you are more likely to just top. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, there was one round. I literally just conceded my match, scooped up, and just played... Played with uh, Hansei and Sam because I'm like, I we I don't need to win to win the match. I you know two of my teammates can win to win the match. So it's like it's like there's a lot. Also there's a lot of like strategy components to three v three too. I think that's kind of nice. But maybe I'll I'll talk about that in like a whole another separate video. Yeah. But uh, I guess I can go over my deck list. I don't know if you. I guess you guys all saw the video now. Um. So let me let me explain <clears throat> I guess what I played and why. I guess maybe a little bit more. Um This was the list we played. And honestly, I thought it was like I thought it was the best deck in the room. I mean, why else would I play? Why else would I play anything else otherwise, right? If I didn't think that. But I did think we had honestly the best deck in the room. Uh because I think Lullaby of Obedience was actually an insane tech. Uh, I think low Bible obedience uh, was the reason why we did really well. Um, all three of our teams topped. Uh, my team, uh, Gunther's team, and then like uh, Lucas' team all topped uh, with with uh, Lullaby of obedience in the main deck. And I kind of want to talk about Lullaby of obedience, right? So, um, Lullaby of obedience is a card that was what last played competitively about seven years ago, right? I think the last time that card was really, really played was in uh, Zodiac format. And, you know, Zodiac format, I feel like, is very similar to uh, the Snake Eye format that we have right now. Um, and, you know, if we were just to read Love of Venus and what it does, it's a pretty funny card. Actually, I believe it was played at Worlds 2, no? Actually, I think... Bowden, um, I think Bowden uh, played it at, at Worlds in 2018, I believe. But nonetheless, um, it's a card that hasn't seen play in such a long time. Um, and so, I guess like this is the first time in what f six years, seven years, that, um, that this card is finally seeing play. And so I really wanted to talk about it because I think this card is what contributed to our success. 
And yeah, so I want to preface the conversation about Lullaby with first a shout out to Walter. Because Walter was the one that like really brought it up first in, in like our testing cord. Like he was the one who like kind of brought the conversation about love Lullaby of Obedience. And I think when we first looked at this card, we're like, seems fine. Seems okay. And then like it was revisited and kind of talked about it a little bit more. And we're like, yo, this card is kind of fucking crazy. And well, why? Well, if you call Witch, you have... Well, if you call, um, like, the episode of the Black Witch, it doesn't matter if they summon you to the field or give it to your hand. It's just another extender. If you call Sega Ash, you can just normal summon it, or um, you can just normal summon. If you call Poplar, it doesn't matter if they give it to your hand or, um, or they summon it to the field, because both ways works for you, right? So it essentially became um, not only a starter, but also an extender, and that's essentially what Bonfire was. That's essentially what Wanted was. So... It served as basically the fourth, fifth, and sixth copy of almost every single starter and extender in our deck. And then as we theoried the card more, it also not only became starter extenders, it also became um, interruptions. Because at some point, you get to call hand traps. And that's not something that's unlikely. It actually came up a couple times where going second into like summon limit or um, you're going second into like a board... Um, well, mainly summon limit, realistically, you get to call, like, your opponent's hand traps. You get to call cards like Effect Veiler, or you get to call cards like uh, Ash Blossom, right? And why that's really good is because if your opponent has summon limit face up, um, they if they normal summon Snake Eye Ash, they could use the effect to search, but they can't declare popular to special summon because if they do, they'll be locked on their own summon limit. So grabbing cards like Ash Blossom while going second to their board allows you to basically stop the Ash effect uh, by sacking itself and summon limit. So like if they want to turn off their summon limit, you can stop it. And then they still need another card to keep playing after the fact, right? And it has to be like basically Witch. Um, so so, uh, so Lullaby like going second into like those game states where also just became like a, a non-engine, which is absurd. And then it almost was like low key better than Bonfire or Wanted because it's not even it's not once per turn. Uh, I think against uh, uh, one of the teams I played in Swiss, I actually used Lullaby twice, and one of the rounds I used it three times because I drew it all formula, <laughs> like which was so absurd. Actually, um, I was at two thousand life points though, but life points don't matter. Uh, so. So yeah, I think that card is really, really crazy. Um, now, like, in in the context of like the format too, uh, it is there are some pros and cons with the card, and we can maybe kind of like talk about uh, about that because you know it's very scary to put a card like Lullaby of Obedience in your main deck, right? Um, because what if you play against the branded bozos of the world? What if you play against, like, the voiceless voicers? You know what I'm saying? What if you play against flu on Like, Like, um, it could seem kind of bad, right? But I think, like, we pretty much, if you look at, like, the analytics and the data from Wises Costa Rica, uh, out of, in the, within the top 16, it was 81% fire decks. And that's a trend that we thought was going to pretty much be similar for YCS Vegas. Because in a 3v3 setting, I feel like you're more inclined to play fire decks in a 3v3 setting. Because you don't want to let your teammate down. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you don't want the teammate playing voices voice. No cap. Shout out to Santoli though. He's insane. But you really don't want, like, a dude... Playing voices, voice on your team. You don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, you're not really like, like trying to get those type of teammates. Um. So like it and and so like realistic, I kind of made sense because we're like, yo, like, if you think that the majority of the rooms gonna be playing fire, then why would you not play the card? But it is risky, right? Because, uh, it is risky because like, you know, uh, my team didn't have two round buys 
Uh, and I, I know like Gunther's team and Lucas team had like UDS champions on their team, so they started with 2 0. And obviously, if you start with 2 0, you're less likely to play against like uh, the Bozo teams playing like random shit, right? Um, so that was like the main concern for, for my team, but I'm like, uh, but like, uh, Gunther said something that like kind of like stood out with me when we were like talking about the card, which was, you know, uh, are you, we're trying to win, right? Like we're trying to win. We're trying to win the YCS, right? Uh, like we're not just trying to top, right? Because like, I think at the point that we're at, obviously like, you know, everyone has different levels of, um, excitement for their accomplishments but for i guess like the stage that we're at where we are trying to rack up like weiss's wins we're like getting a top is obviously like super nice but that's not like the end goal and i think that if we made that cross out i think like we would have had an easier time topping but if we wanted to win in top cut i think maining that de main decking will have obedience just made more sense overall um especially because uh in top cut uh we expected all fire to be left like the 80 percent to convert to like like 80 percent from costa rica fire expect we expected the same to also be true for vegas to be 80 percent fire and i think if i'm not mistaken after looking at like the weiss's vegas data it was also 80 percent fire at vegas as well in top 16 you know um so so yeah so i think that was like a really good moment where uh you know we made that realization we're like you know what i think uh it is a little bit risky but it makes sense you know and sometimes you're gonna have to you go with like you have to like make those type of judgment calls um and and yeah and so we decided to main that kit but yeah the i also um wanted to showcase uh, some other aspects about the card that I guess may have went underlooked, which is some of the combos involving uh, Little Bible Obedience. So I'm going to show one combo that really blew my mind, and I think it will blow your minds too, um, with basically a Diva Star of the Black Witch and a Lullaby of Obedience, okay? Uh, because... This right here, this two card combination made me realize like, bro, this is crazy. Um, and then after I show off the combo, I'm going to talk about some funny stories with Lullaby of Obedience because, you know, playing a card like this is going to be quite, you're going to get some hilarious stories, right? So, um, but anyways, let's say you open Lullaby of Obedience and uh, Black Witch and, you know, three blanks, right? And you are going to be going first. And usually how I would play this out is I would activate Lullaby of Obedience. And I would call Snake Eye Ash, right? So uh, my opponent gives me their Snake Eye Ash because they're playing the best deck, of course. Why wouldn't they? And um, I'm sorry. And now they gave me Snake Eye Ash. They're like, you can have it to your hand. I'm like, sure, no problem. Now you can go normal summon Snake Eye Ash. Use its effect to grab you Poplar. Uh, special summon the poplar and then use the effect. Ooh, a little bit of a glare there. Use the effect of poplar to grab you a uh, snake eye spell trap from your deck to your hand, right? So typically here, you're going to grab the divine temple of the snake eye. Um, and But before you play the divine temple, you want to uh, summon the witch and then see whether or not the black witch resolves. Because depending on whether or not the black witch resolves... Uh, it changes what you want to place in the spell and trap zone off of temple, right? Just uh, sequencing, um, like proper sequencing. So we're going to use the um, Diva Star and we're going to pitch a card out of our hand. And then we're going to activate the effects. We're just going to assume for the sake and purpose of this combo that uh, your opponents don't have a hand trap and everything's resolving, right? So uh, Diva Star is going to resolve and it's going to set you um, original sinful spoils, okay? So, so far... This looks like basic Ash Witch combo, but you're going to see that it deviates pretty soon to be something better than the standard Ash Witch combo. And why Lullaby was actually, Lullaby plus was actually a better combo piece than the actual cards itself. Um, but after this resolves, you can then activate the Divine Temple. 
Um, a shout to Luca for swapping me his Euro tempo. Looks freaking insane. And we're going to place my boy Oak in the Spell and Trap Zone. Um, from here, you can link your opponent's uh, Snake Eye Ash uh, away to, to put their, their side of the field. Doesn't really matter. Um, and then we're going to be summoning the Link Rebo. Right? And then we're going to activate um, Original or OSS to sack the Kribo to now summon... Um, oh, sorry. Actually, I'm going to use the Poplar instead. It's, it's just better. Uh, to summon um, Jet from the deck, right? Jet Synchron. Um, and then now we're just going to do standard stuff, right? So we're going to use Diva Star. We're going to use Jet Synchron. Um, and we're going to be summoning uh, Savage, right? So this protects us from the rest of our combos. Let me see here. So we're going to summon the Savage, and then we're going to activate Savage's effect to uh, put equip the Kribo, right? So now Savage has the negate, and you should be insulated from other plays. Uh, then we're going to activate the effect of Ash, which goes to your opponent's graveyard because it's their card. So I'll put it right here, and then you're going to sack the Oak um, to summon my baby boy, Flamber's Dragon, okay? It's my homie right here. It's my dog. And uh, from here, we're going to declare the effect of Jet Synchron to summon itself uh, from the grave by discarding a card out of your hand, okay? Um, from here, we're going to use the Jet Synchron, which will then get Banish, uh, which is the Flambridge, to make a IP Masquerina. And then that would trigger Flamers Dragon to bring back two level one monsters from your graveyard, right? So we're going to bring back the Oak, and we're going to bring back the Poplar. And then we're going to declare the effect of Oak to summon back the Jet Synchron from the Banish. Okay, so it's, we're going we're gonna to move it back down here. Um, from here, we can then use the IP Masquerina. We can then use the Oak to make uh, my girl Promethean Princess. Uh, we can then use the effect of Promethean Princess to summon back the Flamber's Dragon. And then use Flamber's Dragon to put the IP Masquerina in the Spell and Trap Zone. Okay? So, so far so good, right? Like, looks super standard. But now, this is where it gets a little spicy, okay? Um, because we can then now use uh, the Promethean Princess and the Flamber's Dragon to make a... You guessed it. Um, Ahita. Okay. A little bit of a glare there. Um, I'll just put it here and swap this. Don't worry, okay, guys? No one will know. Anyways, you make Ahita. And then we'll use Ahita to summon back your opponent's Snake Eye Ash. Right? Um, so that, that's why it's so insane. Because now we can use Hita and use Snake Eye Ash from your opponent. You tell them, yo, thank you. To make Selene. Then Selene will reborn you back the witch. And then you use the witch and the Selene to make a free Appalooza on top. Right? So now you have an Appalooza for two materials for free. Then we use the Jet and the Poplar to make a Formula Synchron. And we would go Chain Link 1 Formula. And because we haven't used Poplar yet, we'll go Chain Link, chain link 2 Poplar to put the Flambridge back in the Spawn Trap Zone. And now we draw back to another card. So we have two cards in our hand. And this is our board. So basically, it's the same Ash Wish, like Ash Wish board, except you have a free up Appalooza on top. And during our opponent's turn, the reason why this combo line works is because you can use the Temple to summon the Dragon, then use the Dragon to summon the IP. Um, but Ash Witch didn't end on this board. It ended on a worse version of this board. Um, so this is like why the lullaby was so broken was because not only did you have an edge because you played three more starters than everyone else and three more extenders than everyone else. You were also making a better board than everyone else. And you'll see that like, this is like one of many lines, um, that you can do with lullaby. I'm going to force Gunther to show you guys more combos and make videos on them. So uh, 
thank me later for those. But this is like just to showcase that um, while Lullaby wasn't just like a random tech card, a win more card, or whatever, it's like literally both engine, non engine, makes your board way better. Um, it doesn't lose the cosmic. You have Savage Negate, <laughs> you have a free Omni Negate. And even if your opponent cosmics you, you still have formal to go Baron, and they have to beat Appaloosa. Bro, good luck. <laughs> good luck, dog. Like, it is... There's no out to this board. <laughs> like, you're not beating this board. Like, pretty sure. And you still have two more cards. Cosmic Spear Mode? Oh my god, this is like the Twitch chat moment where they're like, naming random cards that beat you. You know what? Fine. <laughs> but um so yeah so i hope this um i hope this kind of showed you guys uh why this is like so good um and why like lullaby was like really really strong so there's some moral combos if you guys are interested in that let me know in the comment section below and then um uh, either myself or gunther will show show them to you guys uh Oh yeah, you would summon. Uh, you would summon. You would make a uh, SP there. By the way, with IP later. But yeah, it's like literally ten interruptions. But yeah, so if you guys are interested, I will show you guys uh, other combos or Gunther will later, uh, because we really worked a lot on the lullaby combos too. Because um, we really wanted to make sure we know how to use this card. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. So there's that. And now I kind of guess now that you guys seen that, I kind of want to talk about some sort of like. Um, I will now, I, now that you guys have seen the combo and why the card is so good, I now kind of want to talk about some funny stories I've had with Lullaby of Obedience this past weekend, right? Because I'm sure you guys want to hear some of like the, 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 the bloopers. Okay. So in top 16, my teammate Hanse calls Ash Blossom with Lullaby of Obedience. Our opponent said, yo, I don't have it in my deck. <laughs> Bro, our opponent sided out all their Ash Blossoms <laughs> to play around Lullaby Obedience. Do you understand how crazy this is? This is logically wrong on so many levels. I don't even know if it's big brain or if I big brain my opponent because my opponents are now taking Ash Blossoms out their deck for free. For free. <laughs> Bro, what if I never drew low level obedience? You're telling me that my opponent now just doesn't have Ash Blossom in their deck for jokes? Man, that is crazy. And it's funny because like this has actually happened seven years ago. There's a feature match that Kamal played seven years ago. I don't remember which Wysis it was. Maybe it was Atlanta. I have to check again. But seven years ago, Kamal Crooks, the uh, one of my the, the team I, like the same person that I literally won the YCS with, um, he literally went activate Little of Obedience and he called Ratpeer. The guy's like I sided it out. <laughs> Bro, it was actually insane. So, I mean, it's a funny card. So that's why, like, I thought that was hilarious. And then, um, I think it happened again in Swiss for us, where someone else, I believe, um, sided out two witches and drew their one witch. <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, what? That is so crazy. Like, what are the... Like, so the dude sided out witch and had to specifically draw that one witch for that card to be dead. Like, it was so troll. It was so troll. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Um, so I'm just like... I was I was literally fabber-glassed fabber um, that that actually happened. But hey, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So, but... I hope you guys kind of like learn a little bit more about like the history of this card, uh, especially in tier zero formats where 
uh, Little Vibe of Obedience is just like really, really cool, and I'm glad that he got to see it play again. Um, the, the, that, the, the last story I had that I thought was super funny was this. I played against actually my Twitch mod in Swiss, believe it or not. And I went Lullaby of Obedience, and I called Snake Eye Poplar. Okay? Uh, he gives it to me. I'm like, okay, effect special. You know, effect search. I make my board, and I pass over to him. And for turn, he drew another Snake Eye Poplar. So he goes, normal summon Ash, effect. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. He searches the Ponyx. He goes, activate bonfire. He grabs another snake eye ash. <laughs> because he drew the poplar and the second one I took. So I'm like, bro, what are the odds? Like, it's just a really funny card. Um, especially manipulating people's decks and stuff. You know what would be really cool? What I think could be really cool is... If it was the same ruling where you get to see your opponent's deck, which was the case back in the day. Back in the day, when you had to be low level obedience, you actually get to pick up your opponent's deck and look through it. So you actually get to scan their deck for free pretty much, right? Um, but nowadays, you can't really do that. Uh, nowadays, they changed like, the, the ruling on it. So, uh, so it is what it is, yeah. So yeah, so I hope that... Uh, I, ho I hope you guys enjoyed... Uh, the story behind Lullaby of Obedience. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, Pat, you remember when you uh, activate Crosslight calling Summon Living in top 8? Wait, was that you? Was that you? Yeah, that was... I crossed... In Costa Rica, I crossed out a Summon Living and I... I, uh, I OTK'd I OTK this guy. That was nasty. That was my teammate? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, that's my match. Oh, no way. I was playing versus Ruben. Oh, you're... Oh, I remember you then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're from Peru. You're Peruvian. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, from Panama. Oh. Yes, now I remember. No, the Peruvian team we played in top 16. Yeah, in top 16. I was thinking it was Ruben. Yeah, you're from Panama. I remember. Because Ruben's also from Panama. So that was kind of like crazy. Uh, you should have flipped that. You should have flipped the table when that summer limit came out. <laughs> yeah, but I thought that was really funny. Because I actually. I, I summon limit that. my Yeah, I summon limit uh, this voiceless opponent to like win the match. Pretty much. Which is nice. So. No Australian white says I can't, bro. I have I work I work a full time job. I can't just take it off. You called the summon and I fell out of my chair laughing. Yeah. Okay, I guess maybe we could talk about that. Um, let me think about the best way to approach it. But. But yeah, so let's talk about this. Could I have won my match? Let me see if I can pull it up first, and then we'll talk about it. Um, give me a sec. Okay. Um Uh you go why says Vegas swim time? Okay. Then who else can do it other than Taiwan with the twenty You can use a sanctuary and you pay Oh, wait, hold on. You see the problem here? Got like I want to skip this. Okay. <clears throat> all right. All right. All right. Let's talk about this. <laughs> um All right. So as you guys know, uh this past weekend I played the team YCS in Vegas. And in the finals, everyone has been left wondering, could I have won this game state, right? Because uh, during Heine's turn, when he went first game three, 
he was like, yo, he can't even beat this, right? He was like, you can't, he can't even beat this. Um, and, and, uh, and so if we go back a little bit, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't cross out, he has crossed out his sum limit set. And, and, um, I'm just like, yeah, set that summon limit and, and uh, let's do it. So, I guess let me explain my side of the story, right? So, in my head, um, I did have an out. It was not an easy out to see, uh, but I did, ha I did have a crazy line. I did have a crazy out. So, first things first, I actually made the read in this game that he has some limit and cross out because the moment that he showed his hand to his brother, Heisem, I, I knew for a fact without a doubt in my mind that he had cross out and some limit in the same combination because, because, because I could just, I, I just had a, I felt like I had a good read on, on like the room, the duelist. And so as a result, when I asked him and he thought about it, that was when my suspicions were confirmed. And I had to like make him, I had to like hope that he actually crossed out my Ash. Because if he does, then I could top that cross out and cross out his summon limit. Because you'll see that if when I go, when I start going through my deck in this feature, you'll see that there's a copy of summon limit in my deck with, with cross out. Um, I, cause, because I was prepared. I had a feeling. That I had a feeling he was going to draw crazy. I know how Honey gets, bro. He be drawing fucking crazy. So I was like, oh my god, he's going to rip it. He's going to do it. Right? So I had to be prepared. Um, now, if we fast forward to the moment where he finally summon limits me. Where I'm like, and I said, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Because in that moment in time, like, what was I supposed to do? Be like... Damn, that sucks. Guess I lose? Hell no. You know what I'm saying? Because that means you admitted defeat. So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, no, this match is not over yet. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna put on I'm gonna put a fight. Right? So here was the out. Let me explain. So I knew for a fact he had summon limit, so there was two ways for me to win. There was two ways for me to win this game. Um, and because I think part of being a good duelist and an advanced player is you need to identify your win conditions in a match, right? And I knew that there was only two win conditions, which is not a lot. You would think, oh, there's two ways to win. Well, the issue was these win conditions were very, very difficult. I'm talking about, it was, I put it on, on God, as Hani would say. <laughs> and let me explain the two win conditions I had to win this match and, and, and how I could have done it, but I had to put myself in the best position to do so. So first, the first win condition is this. I had to bait Hani into cross outing my Ash Blossom or using cross out on his own turn so that I can potentially top deck my own cross out for turn in order to stop the summon limit, right? Because if I have cross out his uh, summon limit and he chases his own cross out, then I can't win. So that was the first win con. He doesn't take the bait, so now I'm left with one win condition left. Can anyone guess what this last win condition is? Well, I'll tell you. I had to draw a bonfire. Bonfire? What do you mean? Well, it's two. It's a two-step process. Let me explain. Um, because in my head, the reason why I was so calm, the reason why I kept my composure during this match, was because the only thing on my mind wasn't the words he was saying, but rather, how do I win this, right? Like, how do I win this game state? Because I knew that in the next 20 seconds, I'm about to literally stare down a summon limit. And so I had to top deck Bonfire. And the reason why is because if I draw a Bonfire, I can grab Populous. Special Populous as my one summon and then grab the Field Spell. 
on res, I am going to basically ask Hani, why don't you flip the summon limit? It's game, isn't it? And if he somehow decides to flip the summon limit to troll me, then there's my win condition. Because I can then put a Typhon on top of my Populous and then activate the effect of Typhon to swing over the Princess or to bounce the Princess in case it's an Imperm, then swing over Snake Eye Ash and then in main phase 2, activate Low Vibe Obedience. If he doesn't flip his summon limit, I can still win because uh, guess what Typhon says when you summon it? Does, can anyone guess? Typhon says after you summon this card, you can't no more special anymore anything else, correct? Well, if you can't summon anymore, that means Lullaby of Obedience can guarantee grab you a hand trap when you summon Typhon. And that's exactly what I was going to do. I was going to activate... I had a little bit of obedience in my hand. And I was going to slam that shit down and grab Ash Blossom. And then... Um, I also had, I believe, one other hand trap in my hand. So I had two hand traps left. So... I actually had... My best chance was to then Ash the Wanted... Then use... I, was it Valor? I don't even remember. I had another hand trap in my hand. I think I would have actually... Went Lullaby Call Valor. Because I think I had a second Ash Blossom in my hand. Yeah, I had a second Ash in my hand. I'm pretty sure. So, that's how I was going to be able to win. Like, that was... I mean... That's the only chance I had to win the game. But... The point I'm trying to make here is... When you're like put in these difficult positions of trying to figure out, like instead of like stressing about listening to the trash talk or whatever, whatever, or whatever you want to call it, like the only thing that's going through my mind was like, dude, I'm going to win this game. I just got to figure out how to do it. Right? And then, and so, and I think that's like a, a good takeaway for people who like, want to get better, which is, like, identifying, like, your win conditions, right? Um, and, yeah, so, I think I could have, but it didn't matter because I, instead of drawing Bonfire, I had you Snake Eye Ash instead. So, the long story, the long answer is I actually don't think I would have won. I actually was going to lose this. But it's about putting yourself in the best position, putting yourself in the highest like, give yourself the highest chance to, like, you know, figure, figure out the best lines. Because I think, like, the issue is a lot of duelists gets, um, uh, the, I think a lot of duelists gets, like, kind of, like, you know, frozen, paralyzed, right? Um, so, yeah. So, uh, How do you not just summon Typhon, bounce princess, attack Ash? How does he win on his own summon limit? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, uh, he he's gonna have to turn off his own summon limit. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope that kind of like explained my side of the story on if I could have won this match, and um, and I think uh, maybe it helps gives you some better insight too. Um. Yeah, the next piece I want to talk about was oh yeah game game f in top four. You're cracking me up when you said. Um, you were cracking me up when you said you're really gonna let Rich resolve. Uh, that's fine with me. My my team was like, I don't know what to do. I was flaming him after later at the steakhouse. <laughs> yeah, I got him to impermit, which was actually kind of funny. Um, so he actually he was like, Yo, yeah, your teammate was like, Fuck it, I'm just gonna impermit because that's what I would do. I'm like, All right. <laughs> uh, anyways, no more something in Sekai Ash. <laughs> um. But, uh, yeah. He had Impermanent Ash, yeah. And I actually... Wait, that was game three, actually. I ended up winning through that, which is kind of crazy. Could you not have special, uh, special summon pop and make Typhon instead? Wait, what do you mean? 
Yeah, he imprinted my witch. Yeah, he imprinted witch. He was definitely supposed to hold it and combine it. Yeah, he ended up not doing that. Um, he ended on this because some of them and Promethean Princess is like follow up, I guess. And I guess uh, now that people knew about the thing. Um, oh yeah, okay. I guess let me explain this too. On the whole like trash talking thing, guys, I wasn't even phased. Bro, he he just talks like this. If you guys have ever played him, this is actually how he acts all the time. Like, uh, I just say calm because, like, bro, I, I'll, half the time, I have no idea what he was saying. Because all and the only thing going through my head was, like, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. That's literally the only thing going through my head when I'm, like, in this. And I, I was just trying to remain as calm as possible because, like, like, uh... Because, like, yeah, I, dude, I, I actually just don't care. Um, because I was just locked in, to be quite honest with you guys. Uh, and so, like, I do get the concern with the community, like, oh, like, he's talking crazy, blah, 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 but, and honestly... I mean, he even hit, he actually hit me up actually later to apologize, but I told him like, dude, it's it's okay. Like, um, I didn't take it to offense. Like, I was comp like, for me, I was, bro. The only thing that was going through my head was figuring out how to win. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he actually did reach out to apologize. Yeah. It's a crazy why says final. I mean, people just have um, a lot of different ways to go about it. Like, um, and obviously, when you lose in the finals, um, it's going to... It's going to suck regardless, right? Like, there's nothing anyone can say that could really comfort you when you lose the finals. Like, uh... I think, like, uh, regardless, you're always going to feel shitty, right? Like, like I wasn't ecstatic to lose. Like, I wasn't like, man, that was lit. Like, obviously, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemies. Hell, I probably should have lost in top four. No cap. That probably would have felt better. Um... <laughs> But, but yeah, that's just, that's just like how, that's just, I mean, that's just bound to happen, right? Like when you get into the higher stages of the game, like you're not going to be able to win every finals. Like you're not going to be able to win every time. Like there's some stuff you can't do. And I think like, uh, that's kind of like how, like I kind of like went about it and, um, like I, like, uh, that's how I kind of like flipped my mindset so that the only thing in my head was like, you know what? I don't think I could have really done much in my game. Rather than, like, those two things I talked about. Um, so, I'm just gonna do my best at the next YCS, right? Um, and, and like, uh, Jesse and a bunch of other people all said the same thing to me and stuff like that. So, so I, I'm like, yeah. <sighs> yeah. It, no, it sucks. Like, dude, like, it's never easy to lose. Yeah. Like, it's not, like, something easy, you know? Um, but I think it, 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 like, builds character. Like, uh, it builds character. Uh, losing top four in third place match and winning both my games was painful, but the event was too fun. I can't be mad. Yeah. Um... I mean, I don't think Sam needed to apologize about the whole cursing thing. I think it was a little bit, in my opinion, my personal opinion, um, I just thought it was a little bit ridiculous that he got a game loss. Um, but, I mean, what can you do? Can I, um, I can explain why no TTT and a bunch of other stuff. Um, basically, Talents was really bad. It seems like... My issue with talents was that when you went second with talents, I don't think you can beat a competent player with talents going second ever. It just doesn't win you games when you went second. That I think the misconception 
was that people thought that Talos was a card that works first and second. But in reality, it only worked really well going first. Um, so, so, um, so yeah, like that's why it kind of, that's why it kind of like, uh, it kind of sucked. Um, I just don't, I didn't think, uh, I didn't think that that card just didn't, it just didn't make sense to play that. Uh, and Lullaby of Obedience was better than Talents, and it was better than Crossout. And that's why that card went in the main deck, was because it was pretty much um, both engine and non-engine. And you, if you get stopped by Impermanence, Talents doesn't extend, but uh, Lullaby does. And every other hand trap, let's say you get stopped by Valor, you have to sack your, you have to draw two cards that are very specific to keep extending. Whereas if I get stopped by Valor, activating a little of obedience guaranteed that I kept playing the game. So you see how like there's a very big difference between those two cards. Um and I think like when you like evaluate like the cards, you'll see like that's what's gonna like that's what ends up happening majority of the time. Um I went uh what do you call it? Um, I, uh, I would say that, um, what do you call it? That the, uh, the reason why we cited six going first cards, um, if I pull up my list was because if you guys, like, uh, if you guys watch my deck profile for Infernobles, uh, one of the things I talked about, and this is like an issue of the format that if you win game one um, and you go to game three, presumably you lose game two. But let's just talk about game ones in this format. Winning game one in the current format is probably like the biggest percentage boost to you winning the match. It's like, it's like really crazy. Like if you win game one, you are so ahead. And that's why Sam getting a game loss was absurd. Um, how many premier tops do you have now? I have sixteen. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the the issue is that, uh, you have to build your deck to win game one as consistently as possible because, uh, when you go to game three, um, you now want to secure the match, and that's why we played six going first cards because. In game three, if your opponent uh, plays the same strategy like you, um, uh, and they have like 20 hand traps as well, it's going to be very hard for you to win going first game three unless you side in a lot of going first cards. Um, and that's why in Infernoble, we did the same thing where in Infernoble, when we went first, we sided in like three talents, three cross out, or like three friendliers, three cross out. Basically, as many ways as possible to make it so that if I win the dice row and I win game one, I should be winning the match. And it seems like a very simple theory, but a lot of people didn't really understand that. Um, and then, but once we understood that, like that, for, especially from like uh, playtesting the format a lot, we're like, dude, how the hell are people playing Fire King cards in their deck? Because that shit does not help you win game ones when you lose the role. That that's like the consideration that people haven't realized, which is how do you win the game if you lose the role? And game ones are the most important games in the modern format. And as a result, like it's very clearly defined that Fire like the pure snake eye deck had to be the way superior deck, right? Um, and so that's why like the pure snake eye deck, in my opinion, was the best deck for both Costa Rica and for Voices Vegas. And not only that, we like improved all the different combo lines that the pure snake eye deck had 
So not only did we have an edge in both deck building, but we had an edge in combos as well. And that's why, like, um, my team, Gunther, and Luca's team, we all top back-to-back. -back. And then Gunther's team went undefeated in Swiss in Costa Rica. And then my team also went undefeated in Swiss in Vegas, right? Um, it's, like, a huge edge. Like, but that is, like, basically, like, um, a lot of people, when they play Tier 0 formats, they're like, man, this shit is so boring. Like, everyone just plays the same deck. Resident Sleeper. Copy Road of the King, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, dog. If, like, this is like how you find. This is how you find edges in tier zero formats. Like, this is like, um, like, I guess like what I wanted to show with this profile was pretty much, um, like, how do you gain an advantage in a format um, where everyone is playing the same deck? Right, and people don't understand where it's like, oh, it's just three different cards. It's just three lullaby. Like, who cares? But the thing is that I don't think people quite con uh, conceived yet is that getting like a five percent boost to your win rate every game compounds. So, like, I talked about this in the deck in the in the deck profile, but it's like the fact that if you can boost your win rate um uh like you know by like a certain amount of percentage points um like getting that small margin that small like margin of advantage is massive right like yeah let's bring like league of legends as an example like a 52 versus a 55 percent win rate champion is massive and it seems like oh it's three percent but nope it's not it's not just 3%. It's 3% every round, every game you keep playing. And that compounds through Swiss. That compounds through Top Cut. And that and that's that there you go. You got a wisest win. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that's the part that like I think if people had a better understanding of of like gaining that 1 2% edge is really really massive right um right because it's all about like it's a numbers game it really is a numbers game at the end of the day um and i think we were able to prove that like between the two ycs's and that's why like i'm super um grateful for my testing partners because like i think that without them without working together i don't think we could have I don't think like um we would have been able to like come up with that, right? So So yeah, so that's what I wanted to talk about, right? Which is like getting that small edge, right? And like one of the first thing we did that I think put us ahead of the format was we looked at what everyone was doing. Like we looked at the standard combos. And so we looked at okay, what is the average guy doing? How is the average person comboing within the format and then we like studied it we're like okay they're doing this okay they're doing sting i ash they do this right they do that then do that and then we're like okay now how can we make the combo better right i think the the biggest trap that a lot of newer players fall into is like they'll like see a video and they'll be like oh duh this is what i should do and they only they just watch it and they do the combo through repetition, but they're not understanding like the underlying factors behind the combo, right? Like, why are you playing your cards in that way? Like, why are you normal summoning Ash versus summoning Witch first, right? It's like, it's like understanding. That, and, and, and I think like once you start questioning and you start really deeply thinking about like your cards and the order in which you play them and then like why you play them. Um, all of a sudden, like, you just actually naturally become a better player. Uh, because during the YCS, you actually don't actually do DB combo lines. You don't actually do the YouTube combos. You're going to get stopped. You're going to, um, you're going to, like, uh, you're going to get handshuffed in weird spots. One of my rounds, I got, I got Typhoon. I got Typhooned. One of my opponents Typhooned me. I don't even want to talk about it. 
I literally was so shocked. I was like, what is going on with your deck list? They typhooned me. I'm like, so I'm at, I like pivot my board completely because I've never been typhooned before. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, and I think like, and then, and then that's how we kind of like figured out some really sick lines because every time we, um, every time we get stopped, we like figure out a way to pivot or like, um, like a good example is like, I remember Cam like hit up to me and he's like, hit me up and he's like, yo, if you normal summon Ash and it gets impermed and you have only one witch left in, and which is your only card left in your hand, how do you sequence your hand? Like, how do you combo? If you open, uh, wanted and, and say guy Ash, how do you play the hand out? Right. Um, I think like those understanding that aspect is like kind of like makes you start thinking about the game more critically rather than just being like, uh, I don't know. It's like, just start, like, you know what I'm saying? Like we just like play cards for no reason. Right. Um, yeah. So like that was the first step. The first step was really looking at the combos, seeing how people are doing it, make, and then improving on them. Uh, and then the second was, uh, well, this is something that Gunther's really good at, which is bricks. Necess mandatory cards versus uh, cards that are not mandatory, right? The biggest culprit is Birch. I don't know how, where, or when people are getting Birch from. That card is ass. It, do you know what that card is? I'm going to show you what that card is. They're playing. If you play Birch, you're playing this. Just your Confit. This is what you're playing. It's really. It, it has. <laughs> bro. At that point, might as well play three Birch. No, like, actually. Like, um, but the thing is, I think, like, I talked about this in one of my. Like, uh, if you guys watched, like, the video on, like, why you're not getting better at Yu Gi Oh! One of them was like, you have attachments to certain cards. And Birch is a great example of that. Like, bro, there are people out there that have genuine, genuine attachments to Birch. I do not understand why. But they are literally, like, they have a special relationship with Birch and they cannot take it out of their deck. They, they like, they actually cannot take it. They're like, bro, this card is insane. And I'm like, no, dog, it is not insane. It is not insane. You are not winning. You are breaking on that card. I'd rather play the third Poplar or second original Sinful Spoils than play Birch. Um, but but I guess like that's the kind of like point I'm trying to make is like you have to determine mandatory slots. When you start building this deck from scratch, this is what you're going to find really quickly. Right? This is what you're going to find really quickly. Okay. Um, this is like the mandatory slots. Fire King cards, believe it or not, they're not mandatory. They're they're flex spots. Like like Fire King cards are genuinely like their role within the deck list is a flex spot. And so, and so that's why th that shit was cut out immediately because it's like, dude, Fire King cards are not mandatory. They're literally like, they're based like Kieran is basically a cross out. Can you tell the difference? Can no corporate cannot tell the difference between cross out and cured. Jet Jet can be argued as a spike spot. That's fair, but honestly, the more we play, that shit was basically mandatory, because you needed a card to summon off of original that did something or like that was a plus one, and Jet Synchron was that. And if you juice Jet Synchron, your combo was also really strong, and I can show that off for you guys as well. Like, opening Jet was not a brick. It actually made your combos better. Oh, thank you for the raid, uh, Rourke. Appreciate you. No, second original is not mandatory. Optional. Flex spot. But these, this was like bare bones minimum engine you could play. Like, you can make an argument to not play Jet, but... Um, but yeah, we, that's, that's a whole other argument. Like, you can ma basically play 20 cards and not consider Jet, but I would say uh, one for one is mandatory. Yes, it's an engine card. You need to play the game. But, um, but like, 
but like this is like the next step, right? Like the first step was like understanding how people are comboing. The second step was so that's like kind of like the technical play aspect, right? How are people comboing? How are people sequencing their hands? How can we do that better? The second step was how can you like how ca how can we like make the list the best it could be? And then that's like kind of like the discussion that you have of like mandatory versus non-mandatory slots, uh, non-engine slots. What are the best non-engine? And that's where you start theorizing a little bit more about like, okay, these are cards we should probably play. We should, and then all that good stuff, right? Um, and then like a good example of this, right, was Amblo Whale. Who remembers my boy Amblo Whale, Mister Whale? People threw this card in their deck without ever thinking. If it actually makes sense. Like, they just threw it in their deck for... They're like, yeah, fuck it. OCG played it, we played it too. Let's ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's kind of like the example of like what we were trying to talk about. Of like, okay, like, everyone's playing this. But then, why are you playing it? You know, it's like, it's like basically always asking why. Kind of. Um, and like, and then if honest, at the end of the day, it's like a discussion. It's a discourse, right? So like, if someone has really good logic and they can uh, logically explain why you should or should not play it, then it makes the list. Um, and but I think that like that discourse doesn't happen enough in people's testing circle, and that's why a lot of people typically have way worse decks because people aren't make aren't having that conversation. They're just like, dude, I want to play Amber Whale because Amber Whale's cool. Basically. Um, so, yeah, the whole point of this is, like, basically to talk about, like, uh, just kind of, like, critical thinking, right? Um, so, yeah. And then, yeah, and then, and then after that was just, like, you know, yeah, so we improvise the combo, you work on the deck list, and then the side deck is kind of like what you expect. And I think that after that, those are like kind of like the recipe for success um, for, uh, you know, getting those small percentage point advantages in Tier 0 formats, right? Because at the end of the day, like in Tier 0 formats, the majority of people are just, we're all playing the same list, right? But then why do the, the same people keep performing? It, sh it shouldn't make sense, right? But hopefully what I explained just now made it made more sense. Because, like, these are kind of, like, the conversations that are happening in, like, the testing circles, right? Like, these are the things that we are thinking about. Because it's like, okay, let's let's get those edge, you know? Like, let's, let's get that edge for, like, um, for, like, our deck building. Let's get that edge for the technical play, right? Uh, let's get a little bit of the edge in, like, the side deck, stuff like that. So... And, and like I said, it adds up. It adds up. So. Uh, let me see. I've got a bunch of... Uh, let me see. I had a bunch of stuff people asked about there. Packer Smart Guy was your occupation. I'm just, uh, I'm just a noob. Mr. Noob. Uh, Dream Team? Dude, I don't know. There's a lot of people I would love to team with. But... There's a lot of players I would like to team with. Um, Jared has to be on the top of the list for sure. <laughs> Dude, Jared would be insane. You're going to be your top 16 deck list? Yeah, I'll probably look at the top 16 deck list. Um, oh, I would say one thing. Um, I think Jet Synchron could be cut. But you would still play Baron in the extra deck, by the way. Oh, but let me show you Jet plus Witch and why that card wasn't really a brick. So if you open Jet plus Witch, it was actually a really strong combo. Because you can go... This is like... A lot of people make this mistake. This is what all the people do. This is what like the noobs do, Okay. This is what you're actually supposed to do. That's what I'm saying. Yep. Like, bro, I literally watched people open this, and this is what they did. It, it was actually embarrassing. But this is what you're supposed to do. Right? Um, set original. Then you discard a card out of your hand. You bring back the jet. 
Then you make Savage, okay? Now you have an Omni Negate so that you guarantee you guarantee that your original resolves. Because no matter how you start, you always lose to Valor Imperm on original on which. No matter how you start. But the thing is. Um wait, stop by what? What do you mean? No, you this beats Ash Boston. That's the thing. If you get stop on Ash, um, you actually you don't do anything. So that's why now you have an Omni to get for Ash Blossom for free. So you go effect, sack this. You go special Ash. Ash get populous. Now you get the field spell. Now you also just. Okay, now you do this. You play the field. But you guys see what I'm saying, right? Like, all of a sudden, now it's like, bro. I'm, like, cooking. Sack these two. Summon the Flamberge. Use these two. Now you chain block Bell. Chain link one, chain link two. Uh, summon. Summon. Effect. Bring this back. Yeah, there's also a Valor Witch line. We have a bunch of combo videos. I I'll save it. I'll save it for Gunther to show off. I don't want to show everything. Cause then, uh, then like no one's gonna watch the video. But there's a lot more combos that uh, Gunther didn't show. So I think he's gonna do a part two soon. And expect that to be out soon. Okay. Um. But yeah, look look at the board. Oh shoot, which is a like Jed is a brick? Hell no. You know what I'm saying? This shit's not a brick. This shit don't look like a brick. Then you go effect, summon back the dragon off princess, scale this. Then you can go um It depends if you go effect, effect, effect bring that back, effect, sack two, summon that, spank formula. Yeah, sure. Sack these two. Summon another one, then use these two to make formula. Right? Look at this. Bro, look at this board. This is Wish Plus Jet. Damn. They don't teach you that, eh? They just don't teach you that. All of a sudden, like, damn, Jet doesn't look too bad to draw after all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All of a sudden, Jet doesn't look too shabby, eh? Bro. So, yeah. So, I hope that, like, kind of explained our process into building what I believe the best deck in the room. Um... Uh, objectively, at least. Do you know by head? Uh, I know all of them. Because, because we 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 practiced it. I know all the combos. Because I knew for Vegas, I had to know the combos better than my own teammates. Because I know they would ask me what to do. Because, because I just have more experience with this deck. Because I just played a Wysis with it. Hansi didn't play Jet in Costa Rica. So he's learning Jet combos like last minute. Um, Sam didn't even want to play Jet in his deck. He thought it was a brick. So I was like, holy shit. I need to learn these combos to the point where I can coach my teammate exactly what to do instantly. Um, uh, uh, based on their hand. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you guys watch most of my matches, I like normally... Like, finish in 10, 20 minutes. Like, that's like... My average match time is probably 15 minutes. Like, the only games I ever went close to time is if my opponent misplayed. That's it. That's the only time I ever, like, went even remotely close to time. Because the nature of the deck is that, like, the... Bro, you... Like, you, you just win or lose, like, by turn two. 
Unless your opponent be misplaying. Like, Link on YouTube? Yeah. Uh, let me see. But yeah, so like... Um, it, it, it's, yeah, it's basically another, like, math mech deck, pretty much. You guys can go here. Um, yeah, so that's why we also didn't side time cards. Um, because, like, the spots in which time ever it happens is, like, so fake. Majority, of the, even in 3v3 situation, by the way. Like, you shouldn't even go into time, even 3v3 situation. Um... And, like, I think it's your duty to, like, rush your opponent if they're taking slow. If they're slow. I guess at the future match table, it was a little bit different because the judge is literally watching them. Like, so I don't even I don't even need to rush them. The judge will do their job. But in Swiss, like, if your opponent's taking a while, you have to be like, yo, I'm not trying to be rude, but can you please speed up? Because, because you don't play a time card, but other people do, so they're taking freaking forever. So more accounts for time, by the way. Oh my god, were you the one that bar let me borrow the mourners, Tolfa? Guys, for, for YCS um Costa Rica, Gunther gave me gold rare mourners. I thought I was gonna I was gonna DQ myself. I couldn't let myself play with them. I'm like, hell no. There's no way I ever do a deck profile with gold rare mourners in my deck. So I'm like, ah uh, nah. Nah 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 nah. So I went around the venue. Asking for any rarity mourners. Because I'm like, oh, hell nah. I'm never using gold rares. So, uh, I found some supers, and they were pretty cute. By the way, guys, my favorite art of mourner is actually the one where she's looking into the pond. And she sees a reflection. <laughs> I thought that's, that's my favorite rarity mourner. But unfortunately... That shit only comes gold at the moment, but hopefully the rarity collection will, um, will give you will, will give us the the nicer rarities, right? Um, yeah. So, there's that. But I do agree that, like, I know a lot of people didn't switch to the pure deck. Even though they knew it was better because they didn't have enough practice with it. And in hindsight, like, I can't even fault you for that. Because, honestly, the deck is quite difficult to play. Especially if you've only been playing Fire King um, within the format. Uh, like, it, it is quite... It is... In my opinion, I think it's way harder to play. Um, like, uh, there was stuff we were doing where we keep Flamberg, second Flamberge in deck... Uh, there was stuff we were doing where we, um, original black flambird, so we have access to the sack into another one. Um, I think, like, that, I think, that part I understand, to be honest. It matter for me, because I would have scrubbed out on pure, yeah, for sure. But that's also why, like, we main deck Droll. Because, uh, because after we main deck Droll, we're like, dude, the majority of the room has to be playing Fire King. There's just no way they ever make the switch to fear. And so that's why we all main deck Droll too. Because we're like, dude, everyone should just be playing uh, p like Fire King for sure. Um, yeah, the hardest part is like determining what you put under Temple is really... It's like actually like... Well, it's not difficult because we studied it. But uh, it is like quite daunting at first. Like, oh, dude, what do I put under... What do I put with Temple? <laughs> um, yeah. It's why I didn't even play the fire deck. I knew I would be better uh, playing something I knew better. Okay, yeah. Wait, is that you, Tyler? Or are you Chance? Tyler, okay, nice. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, when you set Oki the Spell and Trap Zone, um, if you open, like, Ash Witch, uh, you, you put Dragon... If you open standard Ash combo by itself, you put Oak. Uh, if you open Jet Witch, it's Oak. If you open... Like, there's a lot of combinations. It just really depends on how you open. But there's no, like, specific pattern, per se. If you open Witch by itself, it's Oak. Yeah, it's Oak. Yeah. 
No, Cosmic's not real because you have Flambridge. So, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Ash, one for one should be Flambridge. Um, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, my wife, my team's on my sleeve was stolen. Why is this Costa Rica? Like six dollars in the sleeve. Thankfully, I was get, I was able to get pink this time. Oh, let's go. Damn, you got robbed. How'd you get robbed? Oh, a lot of people were like, "Why didn't you cite Cosmic Cyclone?" This is like a big. Um, a lot of people ask this, like, yo, you lose the summon limit because you don't cite Cosmic Cyclone. But, like, what people don't realize was, I think the only time I lost the summon limit was literally against Hani. I, like, didn't lose the summon limit the entire tournament. Like, um, like, I would get summon limit and outplay my opponent so nasty. Like, um, like, literally using cards like Lullaby. Like, I'm not even trolling. Like, half the time I get cross out, I literally win. Because, like, I already thought about those scenarios, and Lullaby was a card that let you beat cross, like, beat Summon Limit. Like, it seems, like, not real, but it is more real than you would think. Um, but let me, let me explain. Um, so, the issue with Cosmic Cyclone is you need to, like, hand trap your opponent infinite times. And then, yeah, I did have Lullaby against Tani in the finals. So, you need to hand trap your opponent to stop their combo. And then you also need to draw Cosmic to beat their limit. So like, it just it's just not realistic. Like um, and even against Fire King, it wasn't even that. No, I don't even think it was that good against Fire King. You, if you have Co Cosmic, is like a board breaker, but our approach was to hand trap our opponent. Like, like it didn't fit in with the theme of like what we were trying to do. Like, basically, if you look at our deck, we identified the win condition being, don't let opponent play. Cosmic was a card that says, let your opponent play against Fire King, right? A lot of people were like, Cosmic feels like, oh, it's so good. But that's not how you win against Fire King. If you, the way you win against Fire King is to stop them from playing. Like, you have to hand trap them. You're not winning if you Cosmic their island. It doesn't do anything. Um, and that's why, like, uh, uh, the, the mistake that people were making was they weren't going full send on the approaches. They were playing, like, half hand traps. Half Cosmic, like they were playing hand, like nine hand traps. Cosmic, Talents, like all these cards. It's like, bro, pick one. Because nine is, nine is like really sus because you can hand, you hand loop yourself when you only play nine. But when you play a lot of hand traps, it becomes less of like hand looping. Like you don't hand loop yourself. In specific moment, Cosmic is good, but we don't want specific, like, random specific moments. I want a card that is always good. I want cards that are always good. Like, random moments, you can't determine if those random moments are going to come up. Like, you don't know. Like, you don't know that. That's the issue with those cards. I, I don't want to play a card that's 50-50 good, 50-50 bad. Because the 50-50 that's bad, I just lose. I want a card that's always good. 90% of the time, it's, it's freaking insane. And, and that's why the, the full send approach with hand traps, I think, was the, the best way to play it. That's why we didn't have talents either. Talents, ta bro, I've never lost to my opponent's activating talents take. During the entire YCS. It, it, it does not work. I'm telling you. You can put you can run matches with your friends. Put talents in your hand every time going second. Just add it to your hand for fun. You will never win. Like you will not win. Like you can try it. Because we tried it already. It, it Like you think you would win. You really not. Because every board... In the game right now, beats talents. Every end board beats talents. Talents take doesn't work. Talents for going first is good though, but not going second.
it just doesn't work, unfortunately. Which is crazy. I mean, these decks are so broken. That's why. Um, you think Joel will say good after Pure will become more popular? I think if everyone plays the Pure deck, uh, Joel is definitely like a little bit worse. But there's nothing else you can. <laughs> the issue is there's a there's um when you play the critical mass of hand traps, it just there's um there's just nothing else left to play. That's why it's kind of sus. And by the way, I don't know. Did you guys watch the podcast that I did with Josh and Farfa? Um, I was literally like, yo. Um, after. After. Uh, what do you call it? After the YCS. After a list comes out, this format is going to be really bad. I just said it. Like, Josh was asking me, he's like, yo, what do you think about the format? You just won the wisest. What do you think about the format? I'm like, bro, after we put out the deck profile, explain all the theory, release all the combos, this format is going to, it's going to shit, bro. Like, I'm not even sick. I'm missing the wisest is coming up because, like, if everyone starts learning all the combos and playing the hand, the full sun hand trap list, bro, the mirror is a coin flip. I'm talking about, like, it's super coin flip. Like, it's, like, bro, you sit across some dude, you're flipping dice. You're, like, you're, you're hoping to God you win the dice roll. And even if you win the roll, you don't even feel like you might win because of the critical mass of hand traps. It is literally, like, so sus. Like, the we literally solved the format in two weeks or three weeks. But, but we, I mean, we tested the format for, like, two months prior. But it's literally, like, Hand trap, hand trap, hand trap. Who resolves your one core combo first? But the thing was, and I know it sounds like super crazy. People were not doing this. And the, the thing is, people were also not comboing correctly. That was also the other reason why we saw a lot of success. But it's like that. It's like the one. It's like the 5% boost to your win rate is edge is what I was kind of talking about. You know, like getting that percentage to your win rate is how you perform like that like like those type of edges is how like people stay consistent um yeah i didn't talk about the side deck pattern sure um yeah you see on the stream you saw my match against kamal it took me 10 minutes there's no like when you play against someone who have studied the format and played it a lot bro there's no <laughs> there's no it, it's there's no skill bro it's literally like it becomes really bad it's literally flip flip the coin on the hands. Compare hands. Hand trap simulator. Um and I, I do hope that like maybe we can cause like now now you're like you're probably like where am I at, right? It's like bro now the position I'm in is I gotta I gotta figure out a way to beat the abomination that is pure snake eyes. The hand trap version at least. And bro, there is not an easy solution. There's not an easy there's not a lot of decks in the game that can go first into 17 hand traps. That's number one. And there's not a lot of decks that can win consistently enough going second in the metagame. Um So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the best deck deck is, but I am working on a video talking about like uh, how I went to like how to, how I would prepare for the next YCS if uh, I was attending it, um, and I think that could be a really good video. Yes, yeah, think I Ash is a, if that's not in your deck, I don't know what to tell you, dog. That's just a plus twenty. <laughs> it's actually a plus twenty. Is it? Actually, yeah. Not 20, but like 10. It's actually a plus 10. <laughs> Flex your TC to your coworkers? Nah. Back to Marvel Snap? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... I mean, that's... I mean, that's our job, right? Like, that's why... Like, in order to, like, do well, perform it wisely, that's what we have to do. We have to, like, literally... 
absolutely demolish and solve the format, right? That that's like the whole that's the whole point about it. But obviously, it comes to a point where I mean, Josh hit me up. He hit me up, and he's like, dude, we need to figure out a way how to beat this shit. I don't know, but I, the hand trap approach is way too strong. And um, and now we got to figure it out. I, I, I don't even know what to do because I tried. Wait, actually, I can show you. Wait, you guys want to see my other deck list that I also tested? Maybe I can show you guys that. Cause it's not like it's not like I blindly just tried one decks. I tried everything. You can see literally I have all my decks saved. So this was the original deck. That was I was like, oh, three cross out, three talents, eleven hand trap. And then we're like, nah, that shit ass. Look at my side deck. I I was clueless. And you'll see like the iteration. Of like, as we kept going, then I tried this. This is the other list I was trying. Three Cosmic, three Econ, three Droplet, three Super Poly, three Talents. I was a Birch Bozo. Right? Like, I tried all the Breakers lists. It just doesn't work. Yeah, bro, I have a game where I tested against Jib. He super poly droplets me and lost. Like, he actually quit the game after. I might still have that replay. He actually left the game. He was actually... He was literally sick. Super poly droplets. He was feeling nice. Quit the game. <laughs> like, bro. It's so hard to win. I tried, like, this version of the deck. Where I main super poly cross out talents with Kurikara. Shit doesn't work as well. We tried this list where we move Droll. We, we were going to like main Mourner. Move Droll to the side. But we're like, dude, when Gunther and I were testing, 15 hand traps didn't even feel enough. It was actually pathetic. How 15 hand traps did not feel enough sometimes. Like, we were literally like, bro, let's fuck, we gotta fucking play, like, 17, bro. We gotta play more. Because, like, we were, like, our testing was, like, one-minute games. Normal summon effect, special summon effect. He's like, yeah, resolves. Yep, you lose. <laughs> this list was really good. This was gonna be the list that we were gonna originally play. And so, we're like, dude, I think you have to main deck Lullaby. You gotta, like, big dick it. Version 3, Birch was in our deck for no reason. Don't ask me why. Tried voiceless. Oh, this was voiceless. Okay, I was trying some crazy shit. I was trying voiceless with orange lights and then like Ben 10. And then trying to Christian my opponent. Don't ask me why. Okay. I was just trying shit out. I tried another voiceless deck. Shit was ass. Again. Ace. Delete. Like, it's just... <laughs> everything else sucked, bro. Like, it was actually just like... It was rough. Yeah, it was rough. Yeah, <laughs> like... It's just rough, bro. Yeah, we tried some, like... Yeah, we tried, some, like, a lot of stuff. This was, like, the one of the lists that I think I was trying out. Yo, yeah, go Gunther, you gotta put out that part two, bro. People are asking for the goo, man. Yeah. Uh, we played a lot of Bistils in the side because... Um... Oh, yeah, I tried this as well, Fire King. More ass. But, um... The reason why there was a lot of Bistils in the side deck was because... Basically, okay, if you think about it, how does Voices ever beat you? Summon limit. <laughs> but if you Bistil them, 
you get to start your turn with a free body. And the extra body allowed you to make Nightmare Phoenix as the second summon. And cards like Serenir and Druis chain blocked it as well to out your opponent's summon limit. Right? So against like that deck, we would do this. Right? Like these are we don't play this. We don't play this. Um, and then you don't you could take these out. And then this this should give you like solid side panels for that deck. I guess voices. Valor. Like, look at this. It should just be game. Um. Let me see. Oh my god, this is demon. <laughs> All right. Game. Um. But yeah, like basically you just wanted to, because Voices was the only other deck in the format that was super scary. So you just wanted to give yourself the highest chance to beat that deck. Oh, you guys want to see the, you want to know the craziest technical play? Like you want to see some crazy tech play I did at the YCS? I actually blew my opponent's mind crazy. Let me show you guys. Wait. Oh my god, DB. Shit ass. Terrible platform. Fuck. Okay, whatever. If I can't do it on DB, just take out real cards. So, like. Um. So, I had Witch. This hand was so. I was going second into the Fire Mirror. I hand my opponent. And this is my hand. There's this, 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 this. Where's Morn? Oh, oh wait, I ship, I ship my mourners to Gunther. Morn, guys, Gunther robbed me. So I have this, this, and then. I think this was it, right? Yeah, this is it. So, okay, this is my hand. Okay. I'm going second, and and uh, my opponent has two sets, okay? These are his two sets, okay? I just triple hand trapped them because I'm the GOAT, <laughs> okay? I'm trolling. It's, I think I, like, double hand trapped him. It's like this, I think, All right? So, at this point, he has two sets. In stand my face, he goes... Anti spell. So look, the Sussy card is anti spell. I'm like, fuck. Okay. So I go to main phase one and I immediately go set bonfire. Okay. I go summon witch, discard original, discard a card on my hand, affect set original. Right. So now I set original. Then I go normal summon ash. Use both of them to make Baron. And this is why, like, I think even if you don't play Jet, you're supposed to play Baron. Right? Now I go Effect of Baron. Target the Anti-Spell. I pop it. My opponent didn't flip another Anti-Spell. But I don't know if you guys see the, the outplay here. I can flip my Bonfire. I don't even need to negate it. Yeah, I st yo, gee, I told I told you about this, right? This actually came. This actually this actually happened in Vegas. I was like, yo, I actually feel like the god. I feel like a god right now. <laughs> and I don't. He has another anti spell up, and he flips up. I'm like, sure, I don't need to negate it. I go bonfire, <laughs> get populus, special populus. Get field, and now I will decay him. <laughs> Joey's just played a spell, bro. I but it was already set before the anti spell was up, so now you just outplayed him for free. But like, 
There, there's a lot of really cool plays with this deck. But the Baron shit comes up a lot in this in this deck. That's why this deck is so broken, because you can make this card. Also, damn, the European Q stores look crazy in lighting. But yeah, I, 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 will, I will have to give credit where it's due. I learned that shit from Gunther. I was like, I don't even know what format it was, but he did that in one of the formats. I think it was actually in, in Guadalajara. It was Guadalajara, pretty sure. Because it came up with, like, in Sword Soul. Because, like, if you get anti-spell, you, like, set Emergence. Then you special Vishuda. Make make Monk, Vishuda, one of the, uh, the anti-spell. And the guy flips another anti-spell. You can then use Emergence still. Pretty sure that's where it came up. But it's just, like, small plays like that. Like, like I said, like, the small edges. Seeing how ahead some people are really makes me how much I got learned all a while. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just a student of the game. I just observe and learn. But, um, but yeah. There's some, all, there's some other cool plays, too. Like, uh, for example, this one I learned. This was a crazy, this is a crazy one. Which, oh my god, wait. This is, this is actually too crazy. This is like forbidden technology. Like it should be illegal to like learn this, to know this line. Okay. So this is your hand. You have two hand traps. Okay. A lot of people here just pass. No, not the forbidden gobble. Yo, G. Should we show them the forbidden line? <laughs> this line is so forbidden. It is actually forbidden goo. Like, it's forbidden. But this is full, full combo. Uh, cross out. Just synchron. Normal summon oak. Effect bring back jet. Oak effect sack jet. You can make Karibo first, actually. Special ash. Ash effect get poplar. Poplar effect. Then you go. Then you do uh, this. You go activate um, Divine Temple. You just put like another Ash, I believe. If I can find it. This is actually like forbidden combo. This is the funniest shit ever. I turned to Walter during this one round. We both just looked at each other and laughed. Yeah. Walter was the one who showed me this. He, he, he looked at me. He's like, what would you do here? I'm like, wait, you cross out Oak Jet, right? And then like... When he kept doing, he, then we like prayed this line out and he full comboed. I was like, bro, what the fuck did you just do? You full comboed? But, um, how did it go? It was like, yeah, so you use these two. You summon IP. Then you put something in the spell and trap zone. Doesn't really matter. Then you go jet effect. Like you go jet effect. You can, it's negated. Just pitch the Flamberge. Then you trigger Flamberge. Bring back two. Uh, then you use uh, these two. Make this. Effect. Uh, bring back the Ash. And then go. Um, oh, no, no. Bring back. Bring back this. I think I'm missing something. Oh, no, no. I think I know where I messed up. So this is here. And then this should be Flamberge, sorry. Because this combo is actually crazy. But yeah, then you go uh, use these two. Bring, um... Bring out this. Effect, bring this. Effect, sack this and sack this.
Walter is the brains uh, behind your operations. He is. He's actually the Loki goat. Um, wait, hold on. I just forgot what I did now. Wait, wait. I fucked this up somehow. Dude, I've never done this, but I know that this is forbidden. Hold on. Wait. IP. IP. Hold on. Where was I? This was my board, right? Is this just? Are you supposed to just make? Wait. Also, why do I have two princess? Wait, why do I have two cubes for princess in my extra deck? Wait, huh? I just noticed that. <laughs> Yo. Oh. Oh, I gave. I let Hase borrow one. <laughs> Hold on, because I'm like, wait, I have a second SP too. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Chief. Um. Uh, anyways, okay, where were we? Okay, so so I think we're at the I think we're at the right spot so far. Jet discard, bring back two. Um. Uh, I mean, can't you just pass on this? Make formula here, and then just pass on this. I think, right? You just don't have Princess Engrave. Then draw a card, and then you use this to summon this. Use these two, and then use IP. That probably works. I think you're missing an extra body, so you can't do the other stuff. Unless I'm wrong. Just, guys, find Walter on Facebook and hit him up for coaching. Do yourself a favor. Also, I swapped one of the princes because I just realized, too, this the European princess looks so much better. Because it looks, it looks silver. It has a silver name, I think. It looks silver, and this one has gold name. So this looks like a starlight. You can actually, yeah, hit up Gun hit up Walter. Find Walter on Facebook. Actually, fuck it. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dox him. Give me a sec. If you guys are, if you guys are playing any more events, you can hit him up. Wait, actually, I don't know if I should dox his Facebook. Um, uh, go doing coaching right at the moment. I'm not, I'm not doing coaching. Here, just do this. I have no idea how much he charges, but it's worth. I've never done this combo, but he showed me it once. And yeah, that was really cool. But, like, it was just, like, stuff like that where I'm like, dude, that's so nasty. Like, how does that even, like, come up? I kind of watch. It's a Cartier. Um, but, but, yeah. But this card is actually, this card is so crazy, too. Unfortunately, I have no time to coach at the moment. I'm super busy. It would be a dis dis justice, this service for me to try and coach you guys. Oh, by the way. Yo, these blue sleeves are crazy. Look at the look at these sleeves. Yo, the team samurai blue sleeves are freaking insane. Look at this. Link monsters are blue on blue. Blue on blue. Blue on blue. God damn. This might be the prettiest deck I've ever played, actually. I don't even know if any other deck I've played had this many, like, nice-looking cards. I don't think so. Yeah, Pac-10, baby. You guys know the vibes, man. I don't even gotta say it. Um, but yeah. What else did I want to talk about? Let me check. I think I wrote some stuff down. <clears throat> Access Go could be played over Typhon as well, but... I think Typhon does comes up a little bit more. At uh, one Ash, we end on this. Appaloosa, IP, Flamberge is what the combo what the combo we're going for. This is our board. Usually uh, off one snake I ash. Um it's three it's three materials, Appaloosa.
Um, I would have lost. Second Little Night? No. That's really not needed. But I do think that maybe you can make it the concession to like cut Jet. If a lot of people have enough hand traps so you don't resolve it. But I still think you should play it. It's just really good. But yeah, this deck is mad pretty. What about Q's heart? I have no idea. Ogre? Nah, not that good. Ogre was base. Is Ogre is a board breaker. Because you can't really use it to disrupt their turn or make them pass with it. You have to use it on your own turn when they have IP or Apollo. But then they should never get that far. So that's why that card is sussy. Pure playable with one Diva Star. Um... Playable, yes. Optimal, no. You really need three because... Wait, you... Wait. Did, um, did you other show off the one witch combo in his video? I, I, I like, don't remember. But one witch by itself ends on a better board than one Ash does. Only which is a starter, yes, right? Yeah. Which is a starter ended on a better board than uh than than Ash. It was it's literally better than Ash. I don't even know what to tell you. Because you end on this. You end on this, this, and then the Flambridge. Except you have a Promethean Princess in the graveyard. Uh, yeah, Kurikara can add... Oh, can add Kurikara from Banish the Hen, yeah. But yeah, this is like usually why it's a little bit better. Yeah, that's just Witch. Yeah, you have Flambert here. Uh, it has nothing to do with your normal summon, actually. It's just because you open a Spellcaster. Yeah, Apples is at 2, but that doesn't matter. You have Princess. Yeah, it's due to Selene, yeah. But Prince is like really crazy interruptions. Yeah. SP Lol Nine. Uh, you can check out Gunther's video. He shows it off. Just easier. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Do I? Let me think. No, yeah, that's pretty much it. Is there a spreadsheet with all the combos? Yeah, there is. There is a spreadsheet. Uh, funny stories. Um, oh, pricing. Uh, sure, I guess I can show off the pricing. So we got. Well. Now I'm at, let me see, a sec. So we got four, five, four prize cards this season already. So not bad. So it says, this is the first one, this is the second one. I just keep these. They're just memorabilia's. But yeah, this the one on the left says first Latin America team one says this this one says second so. And I have two of the supers. From second and third. <laughs> no, this should have been an ultra. Then that would have been insane. Then I would have a playset. Oh my god, that would be so crazy, so close. 
But yeah. If I if I get if I ever get a place at this card, uh, I'm gonna go crazy. Uh, yeah, sure. Let me take a look at... Yeah, we can take a look at the list. Anyone Anyone have uh, the list? Anyone have the list of the decks? I think... We can take a look at some of the lists. I forgot... The, the, the Dual Chronicles has a pretty clean list, though. No? Dual Chronicles... No, they haven't updated this in forever. Shake my head. Shake my head. This is actually really clean, too. There's another site. Yo, Matt, do you have it? I don't know if you left. You might have left. Master Duel Meta. Oh, why is your pro deck? Oh, it might be better. Um, yeah, there are a bunch of like non fire decks at top two. Not that many, but oh, yeah, this, right? Oh shit, who's this guy? <laughs> um Don't make fun of me. Oh my god, let me check your list actually. Yo Yo, you got brick number one, brick number two. <laughs> I'm a birch bozo. Shake my head. I hate Adrian's decks, man. <laughs> you got brick one and brick two, bro. Bozo one, bozo two in your deck. All right, the one reborn is kind of base. <laughs> Wait, one cross out? I have to make fun of you, bro. I'm sorry. It's just part of the job, you know? It's part of my job. <laughs> oh, you cited the second Hita? Holy. Three micro to change a heart? I think that was like day one of test, Week one of testing for us, we did that, I'm pretty sure. Twin Twister. Oh, wait, what is this? What is happening? I kind of went full circle on the take cards. Yeah. Good damn. I mean. Yeah. I mean, you could have, wait, you don't play Savage. You just play Formula and Baron. Mm. Mm. It's all right. It's all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who else should we look? Oh, these guys play Typhoon. We played them in Swiss. Oh my God! They saw a Typhoon. <laughs> this is so crazy, dog. I don't know. 
I think this card is so bad. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. Fire breaks. Oh, shoot. Math deck. Oh, my God. All right. 50 hand traps. Good sign. These these cards are so bad. Droplet, Cosmic, no bueno. Anti spell, no bueno. <laughs> Cross out and bell, good cards. But these these two, no good. Spreadsheet for Pier, yeah, we do we do have one. Um what other decks are there? This is Michelle's deck. Did he post it? He didn't post it. There's these decks. The voices decks. Dude, do you ever wanna do do ever wanna look at this? Dude, how did Look at my deck's really good. Has three has three of's. Asia, take those. <laughs> Bro, what how did this deck win a game? How I wanna get a hand on the pure especially for personal use. Uh I'll ask the guys if it's cool to share it. And we can figure it out after. No, like this is nine hand traps with three super poly. Surely you don't win a game in this format. No, this deck is... <sighs> they all play the same list? Oh, I've seen Mr.'s list already. I like the fact that the whole team was all on voice list because that means that as a collective, they agreed that voices is the best deck, I guess, right? If they don't believe that, then... Purely <laughs> forgot prosperity in his deck, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> One talent to make a pearly deck 41 cards. This is so crazy. I don't know why you would ever, you actually can, you cannot play more than four. I would cut black hat to two and play 40 cards. Probably. But I think this is the worst pure snake guys, which is fine. <laughs> Spooky dogwood. That card is like unplayable. Um, yeah. I think I I think dimensional fissure is pretty good though. Yeah, but you could just side talents with cross out for going first. Or just cut Bell. Like, main decking Bell is crazy, too. You, It's better to main deck more than Bell. Like, you could play the same hand trap count, but play uh, Mourner over Bell. But, uh, well, Bell is definitely worse than uh, Mourner. Why play Casper normal summon Ash? Um, he was he like was really comfortable with his deck. He he like honestly, there's no way he could pick up the fire deck. So he just played that deck, pretty sure. Everything else is pretty much the same, right? Oh, it's Tyler's deck. Oh, I saw his deck already. I remember looking at this already. Well, in person. Yeah, this is way better. Fifteen hand trap deck. This is actually a good list. Fifteen hand trap voiceless. 
is probably what I would do too. None of that super poly shit. That shit was ass. Actually, unplay. Oh my god, the side deck. Oh my, yo. You and your man basically made it. Yeah, but dude, this is a good. This is a solid list. This is a great list. The storms and duster, I probably would not play. But those are the only cards I would not play. I liked everything else. This looks good. I wouldn't play this, but I see why you played it. But I, I'm not mad that you did. I don't know. These three cards could probably be three cross out for going first, pretty sure. It's probably these are probably three cross out or three talents for going first. But I don't think this shit is not good. In my opinion. Other than that, I like the list, pretty sure. Uh, I'm in a side right now for his Unchained. What is his weakness? Unchained? Uh, I don't know. That's one Promethean. Uh, Fire King has to play two. Uh, you really only need one. Uh, but you probably shouldn't be playing Fire Kings anyways. <laughs> so you only need one. Uh, Fire King needs two to beat Nib, pretty sure. Like, there's a point where they could Nib you. And if you don't have a second one, you're kind of cooked. But... Fine if you cut it. Sure. But a lot of people probably didn't nib correctly, so I don't know. Axel is really good. Axel lets you make Baron when Diviner gets imprimed. That's why you play Axel. Uh one of one of these. One of all of these. Yeah, Dino Mundo can be a one of, I think. Other than that, there's probably nothing else to really cut. Um Yeah. I think I think I would probably cut the second Dino Mundo for X as uh IP. This should all play. Yeah, 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 that's what I would cut. I would cut second Dino Mundo for IP, probably. Yeah. Other than that, the extra is fine. Scott flu. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Let me check the rescue deck. Yeah, 12 hand traps. The talents are troll. But it's fine. Three bonfire, one pop. I, li I like the fact that he played one pop. A lot of people don't have the balls to play one pop with three bonfire in rescue. But I think it it's correct to 3 1, to be honest. Um, Flu best deck? Fuck. Yo, what's good, Mario? Uh, I like this list. I don't like the talents in the main, but it's fine. <laughs> Flu is great. When's your answer all the time? Oh, fuck. Rescue went extinct. Sprint scatter shot, troll. One pank is troll. Uh, strike is. You need to tell him to cut that shit. Like, actually burn. Like, he needs to burn, to burn the strikes. Like, you definitely would play. Anti spell or summon limit over strike for sure. Probably anti or judgment. Judgment's way better. Because if you protect your back row with judgment, you win the game. Um There was our boy path. It was his car front. Okay, that's actually understandable. Then I respect that. Um played this guy in top eight. Oh shoot! Oh shoot! What's up, Fidel? Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, I think the I think you, not nah, Pank is terrible. Just don't play that card. Pretty sure. I would definitely also, yeah, probably played the third copy of Droll. Signing two Droll doesn't make sense. I think. Let me check. Let's, let me check the last list. There's Flu, the one Flu player too. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, oh my god, this list looks, this shit is ass. Two evenly, two thrusts, one toss, one dark. Yo, I mean, every flu deck just always looks suspect. What? I don't know what to say. <laughs> Yo, this, every flu deck just looks like this. <laughs> it's like the most sus ass ratios I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, yo, is Jared? I couldn't make him play better card. 
I mean, two die fi You gotta be, yo. I mean, seven pots? Fuck. I mean, seven pots is really good. Fuck it. I'll play nine, to be honest, in this deck. This should be bricky as fuck. I'll play nine pots and flu if I could. Bro, how do you think I felt? <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Uh, no, nah, I'm chilling for a bit. Yeah, I'll probably hop off in a bit. Yeah. <sighs> I want to see how much Michelle played. This is a Dogmatica variant. I saw someone play. This is the Nadir version, right? Oh my god. No Ash Blossoms, bro. Cool guys. Yeah. No, they're chill. I actually know them. They're from, they're from my area. Well, not really my area, but they're from like the Philly area. Um, every time I play at Gunther's store, the, I always see them, but, and then this is like the other, this is like the voices guy who plays, yeah, no, I think like a lot of people had the misconception that Ash was a, uh, that Ash was a bad hand trap because you put a fire in your opponent's grave, but, <laughs> But, bro, that logic is terrible. Because, like, because Ash is actually one of the best hand traps to stop them. MBT video talked about that, about what, Ash being bad? Instead of Lux on Sunday, we do unmatch on Sunday, on Saturday, run it. Fuck, Richie, bro, I don't want to drive two hours, bro. Uh, I might, maybe. Yo, it's mad funny. All the people who top the Wises are in the chat. <laughs> Dude, Matt, Matt topped. We have Tyler's team. We have uh, the Georgia team. Um, don't go to unmatch. I want a chance. <laughs> Yo, chill. Bro, guys. People were like, Minsu's insane. <laughs> yeah. Bro, people were like, Yo, so Pack, you're gonna play like Pure Sling at locals? I'm like, dude. I'm like, I literally refuse. Chad is stacked on. Oh, yeah. Adrian's team top two. <laughs> Yo, bro, this chat is kind of fucking insane. <laughs> um, but, dude, if I go to locals, I hope you guys know that I am not playing. Pure Snake Eye. That shit is cringe. Oh, Costa Rica toppers too. Yo, yeah. Judio. Yo. Dude, all the YC toppers are here. Dude, is the chat just this insane? Oh, Jib's in here. Chat went down to casual level. <laughs> uh, Jib alert. Um. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah. Gunther's team topped. Wait, yo. Wait, this is kind of stacked. Um, dude, the chat is kind of stacked, actually. What the fuck? Why can't we face voices in the finals? <laughs> Yo, Sam's in the chat, too. Yo. Nah, guys, there's actually, there's too many, there's too many, uh, toppers in the chat, guys. I'm not, I'm not used to this. Too many toppers, man. I top locals, does that count? Yeah. God damn. <laughs> Yo, that's the go right there, bro. He, he was the tank. If people didn't know, Sam was the tank, okay? He's the he's the tank tank. Um But uh yeah guys at locals, what kind of top were you talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get topped up. Anyways, um uh Yeah, at locals, I'm probably gonna play branded or something. Like, like, bro, playing pure Singa at locals is like, it's like, dude, it's like, it's not even fun. I'm not even having fun. Like, if you go to locals and play, play like, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not even fun. So I'm probably gonna like try like crazy shit. I'm gonna try like branded shadows. 
I'm gonna try like, yeah, I, I think I'm. Gonna, I want to try raid raptors. Um, I have fun tooling everyone at locals. Why not? What's up at? Wait, I have fun tool everyone. Why not? What's up at locals? <laughs> Bro, I'm just trying to have a good time with the local mans, you know. Let's try hungry burger at locals. I'm down. <laughs> Yeah, like, dude, I want to try, like, Infernobles. Yo, Sam, ship me my Infernoble deck. I want to play Infernoble at Locals. You know what I'm saying? Watch this over, guys. Have fun. Enjoy. Enjoy. You know what I'm saying? Just relax. Just sit back. Uh, Pat, did you see the picture of our fist bump before top four? Wait, no, I didn't see it. Wait, what was it? What are you talking about? What deck? Yo! Why is this any next, sun, next week? Guys, guys, I'm, dude, I don't know if you guys do this too, but after a YCS, I just like, I just little sit back and just play some bullshit, man. Dude, go, if you go to locals, like, I get it, you want to win, but there's no way in hell you will catch me playing a, a fire deck at locals. It's locals, bro. Just have fun. Yeah, maybe I'll play pearly tier. You know? Get the VOD. Guys, it's different. When I was playing Fire King, it's different. Can we play Horse Snake Eye? Yo, Sam's leaking the goo. Okay, guys, I did think about trying this out. So, like, if you play, like, Imseti and Pierce Snake Eye, it's not even that bad. You mill four for Vampire, and if you hit Witch or Ash and you play, like, the Mirror, you're going to hit it 100%. Have fun going X X3. I'm so down. <laughs> Shut up. Yo, that's it, man. I'm done right now, bro. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to show y'all the goo. Horus Snake Eyes, baby. I gotta go see that fun. Then we all agree. Chill, chill. <clears throat> Yo, Sam. You know what's funny? I was thinking about it. We actually went Supreme Pro X1, bro. Why can't you be XO, bro? Why couldn't we be XO? We would have won the YCS. No wonder we... Because, you know, we were undefeated until the finals. We had to be X1, eh? We just had to be X1. <laughs> oh, I'm sick. It was destiny, bro. <laughs> Goddamn. You got to hit Rudy and play... Dude, I would love to play Infernobles. Um, were you going to win your match against Hani? Hell no. I was going to lose. But, like, when you're losing, are you going to be, like, depressed, giving up? Hell no. I look at that something, I'm like, I'm about to beat this shit. Like, people were like, yo, Pac was like, yeah, that's fine. Some of them is fine. You thought I had an out? The hell? Well, I convinced myself I had an out. <laughs> I was gonna make it, I was gonna make an out come out of like I was gonna make an out out of nothing from something to nothing, from nothing to something maybe, but I don't know, man. How are you out that? I I already explained it. I'll, maybe I'll make a video on it later, but yeah. Some limits should be banned. I'll make something out of nothing. You know what I'm saying? Turn a hundred to a hundred thousand. Yeah, floods are crazy. Some of them is really cancer right now. It's it's just unfortunate. I usually play like two, three hours a day. Talk to people and stuff like that. Talk to the testing squad. Like the swear god, OMG. What are you talking about? Yo, Jim, when you're down, when you're down five cards, you look at your point in the eye, and you're like, "All right, kill me, OTK me." You know what I'm saying, "What are you gonna do, scoop?" Probably <laughs> after they OTK you. How to not? Yo, I should, I should be playing voiceless. Actually, you guys are right. <laughs> Wait, I just thought about that. That's kind of funny. It's 
You say that, but sometimes they don't. They be giving you false hope. <laughs> Walter's a goat. Yeah, he is. I think I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play Brandon, guys. Oh, I have the deck. Oh shoot, let me show you guys. Yo, guys. So I went to my friend's house and I robbed him, and I stole his branded deck. Let me show you. Um. I think I'm gonna play pure branded, and just puppet lock people. Sounds kind of lit, no? Yo, look, he has a nice look. He has a no-name mirror jade. This is like some brand man. Every branded player has nice ass branded cards. <clears throat> Ooh, you want to start fights at locals? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You guys better talk to me nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have fun, guys. This is not wait. This is not fun. What do you mean? I'm just I'm just trying to give you guys a card, you know. <laughs> so I'm just trying to have fun, you know. Are you puppet lock? I'm flying off my train to New York to slap you in the face. I'm saying I'm just I'm just trying to play the game, you know. Is is that too much too much to ask for? Or? Okay, he has only the one ulti brand fusion, but I do have a couple extra. I'm just gonna give it to him. Brandon Laws. Ooh. Ooh. Nah, dog, not like this. It's for fun. It's for fun. Guys, it's for fun. Yeah. Where's the people talking crazy now? Hey? Where's the people talking crazy now? Hey, go X3. I'm gonna show you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys, bro. Okay, nice field center. Okay, ooh, Shadow Fusion Goo? Damn, what do y'all know about this? <laughs> you probably lock me, the response is hands, no other choice. <laughs> Fusion dupe? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, basically, okay, so guys. You guys might be wondering, wait, Pack, why do you have a Despia deck? Okay, so basically, I'm making this video where I, so like my friend Ji Hoon, he reached out to me. He's like, bro, I bet you won't be able to top locals with my list. So he built the list for me, right? And he's like, bro, you should try to top locals with it and make a video out of it. So I'm like, okay, I'm down. So he sent me his deck, and I and like I'm gonna try to see if I can top locals with it. Um, so we're gonna try. I haven't played Brandon in so long, so we're about to see how washed I am. <laughs> I might be washed we'll play with this deck now. <clears throat> no, no, it's my friend's list. He like is a he's a branded one trick. He only plays Brandon. Motherfucker, the locals watching this list. <laughs> He's literally a Brandon one trick, bro. But I think that'll be a good video. Just like me with a puppet. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to play Infernobles too. That'll be fun. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, after after the Y series, bro. I don't know about you guys. I'm just trying to play like something fun. I mean, Sega is really fun, but just something different, you know. Oh, look, I picked up a... Uh, look at this friend here I picked up. This is like European print. Shout to Gabriel Nets. He, uh, let me use it. Um, Oh, guys, I brought, I brought another rescue deck with me. Should I play rescue? Should I do it? Three spooky dogwood. Epsilon to negate traps. Subversion. Anti spell. Lancia. 
ogre. Some lynx. Some missiles. Some XL. The ultimate ultimate offering. <laughs> oh, you bell. Wait, where's this from? Wait, isn't this like 20 bucks? Yo! I just found 20 bucks in my bulk. Rich. <laughs> Yahoo. Yahoo. Okay. Yeah, this is like what I brought with me to the YCS. Like, basically, like extra cards. Cards that I thought I would play, maybe. Bricks. I brought a whole stack of bricks with me. I could build a house off this shit. <laughs> Let me see what else I brought to the YCS. Because I didn't want to carry that much stuff. I only wanted to like carry cards I need for my deck, maybe. Oh, I saw, um, there's a guy who got, who bubbled out the YCS. I think Joseph Gold is his name. Or Joe Gold. I think he played Infernoids. That looked really cool, too. Yeah, this is like all the, this is like everything else I brought with me. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm saying some more Fire King bullshit. Shifter, in case I wanted to be a demon. SP of the All Knights, in case my teammates need to borrow them. Some unicorns with the price tag on them. More Shifter. European. Oh, wait, I have a Poplar? Oh, shoot, nice. Ooh, Frenier? Ooh. Some Phantasmia. The Horus Goo. Some ghost spells. What's that happening here? Oh, guys. Yo, this one is cool. I actually pulled this from Bologna. When I went to Italy, I actually pulled this on my entry pack. So, that was kind of clean. I got a free, I got a free euro. Oh, uh, my engine changed hard because just in case we thought about playing this. I think we thought about playing this at some point. Like, week one, we thought about playing this. They the take cards. So, I bought them with me just in case. This is a nice one. This is an MRD. Jeez. What else I bring with me? <clears throat> Evening match. If I felt like trolling. Some Econ. Some Where Art Thou's. This. I brought Droplets. Change of Hearts. I brought DD Crow. Heat Soul. One for one. Oh, shoot. Access Code? Some more Thresh. Storms. Cosmics. <clears throat> yeah, that's the PSA 7 change of heart, yeah. Oh my god, Birch. Wait, I have two Starlight Access codes? Jeez. I'm cooking right now. Some friend news. We thought about playing Souls. Some more thrust, dark ruler, another souls. Yeah, that's all the cards we basically thought about. Cause I had to, I basically brought every card we thought about. I think that's it. Sorry, this was my favorite. Yeah, that shit looks crazy. <clears throat> I don't think I brought anything else with me. <clears throat> but, uh... Besides Econ, it's just not good enough. That's why we didn't play them. We brought them with us. We just never played it. <clears throat> Yo, guys, look at this deck box. It always says on the back. The goo. <laughs> it's really stupid, but... Uh. 
All right, chat. <clears throat> I am going to be out. Thanks again for hanging out with me. I am officially cooked. Um, yeah. Oh, shoot. Hope you guys have a good rest of the night. Um, and thanks again. Uh, sorry that I haven't streamed in such a long time, though. It's, it, it definitely has been a minute.